All right, everybody. So lately we've been on sort of this little binge of old, like three to four plus year old, like bread tube, left tube type videos, particularly the like the video essay type content, because I really like going back and looking at the older video essay content back during like the Gamergate era and the end of the Gamergate era, because that's what I believe was the golden age of this type of content insofar as it's like level of effectiveness, it's level of like, uh, um, uh, what's the word for when some top topicality? Yeah, yeah, that's the word. The level of topicality it had at the time and just how well it puts into words tendencies of right wing propaganda. Um, and right-wing content creators as well. So we've been binge-watching these OG video essayist uh, videos from uh, BreadTube, and today I thought we should watch an, an H. Bomber guy video, and I decided to check out some of his older content to see what we should check out, and I was really surprised to see he had done a two-part video thing on something that happened back during the Gamergate era that I've only been able to reference, but I haven't been able to find direct examples of, but I've re but I've like talked about it with you guys because it was an example of when the right, like back during the Gamergate era really started to lose it. And like they just full on decide they were going to abandon reality entirely. For those that don't know, back in, I think it was 2017, Bill Nye did this show it was like his own show that was filmed in front of a live studio audience that was like his Bill Nye the Science Guy show, but for adults. It was like, you're adults now, I'm going to do a science show about the same kind of stuff I talked about back in the day, but you know, you're adults now, so I'm going to talk about it to you like you're adults. And the topics he would cover were things such as sex and gender, and how they're not the same thing, and sex is bimodal and not uh, binary. Um, how big of a deal man-made climate change is. Just a lot of the issues you probably know Bill Nye cares about. He's quite left-wing with his politics. I mean, most scientists tend to be pretty left-wing with their politics. That said, um, Bill Nye did this show and got a lot of hate from the left for it. But it was really funny watching these, like, right-wingers and these, like, anti-SJW, like, centrist YouTubers trying to pretend like Bill Nye had lost it and they were the ones who were in fact agreeing with reality and science and that Bill Nye had become an anti-science left-wing nut job. And I didn't know this, but apparently um, H Bomber Guy made an entire video, uh, like part, like two-part video thing about this, and it's called Bill Nye vs. Pseudoscience. So I've never seen this before, but it's about that entire time, that entire era of like Gamergate, and I am so excited to watch this because, well, goddamn. Uh, th this was this. I'm nostalgic for this. I was a chud during this time, so let's check it out. Oh, I should pause the music first, though. Let me know if the audio is un unbalanced, by the way. Like, if I'm too loud, the music's too quiet, the video's too quiet or too loud, or the game's too loud or quiet. Like, any audio issues. If there's an audio issue, spam me in chat. Spam me saying, Zan, blank is too loud, blank is too quiet. You need to do this. Like, spam me until I fix it. Trust me, if I don't do it and I don't respond to your message because I missed it and I would like to fix my audio and I would, I'm glad you told me, I just didn't notice. Just letting you guys know. Bill Nye was once just a humble mechanical engineer turned comedian who decided to make a children's science TV show. If you were growing up in the 90s in one of the shittiest and most underfunded and creationist overrun education systems in the Western world, this man all but was your science teacher. True. After his show ended, he became an advocate for- I was a little bit, um, Bill Nye was a little bit before my time. Just a little bit before my time. Um, like, I, I was born in 1999, so I mostly grew up in the, uh, 2000s. You know, that was like my my childhood era, but I still watched a fuck ton of Bill Nye, even though it wasn't like new and necessarily current, like the most he wasn't like the top of of the cultural uh, totem pole at the time. But I still watched a ton of Bill Nye. Um, yeah, he, he did. He did a lot to make science interesting for me as a kid. Um, and I know he did the same for a lot of people. God, my downstairs landlord cooks the most insane meals. I, I can smell Every morning, every afternoon, every evening when he's ma when he's cooking, I can smell it, and it's so good. He's, like, making dinner right now or lunch or something, and it's amazing. God damn. 
I, I should ask him if I can have some. For scientific literacy, <laughs> he had many high-profile debates with both creationists and global warming deniers. But then, he suddenly became a crazy, corrupted, swish shill. But Bill, not you! Look, I know there's so many people are starting to catch- I like- you gotta remember, guys, like, the guy who was wearing the MAGA cap in that, that one clip we just saw probably called himself a liberal during Gamergate. Like, during this era, the guy wearing the Trump hat in that video probably called himself a liberal. Because that's just how it was back then. This SJW virus. But I never knew that it would be my dearest Bill. He made me angry. I I'm just trying to get my head around it. Maybe you can tell me. It, it seems as though the show had absolutely nothing to do with science. He made me very, very angry. There's only two genders. I don't need to do research. You're, you're, you are a representative of science. And you just shit over all of it. The world Bill Nye wishes to build seems to include rampant sexual promiscuity, dismissal of science in lieu of feelings, encouragement of sodomy. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, I think I went a little overboard on that. You guys, I, I'm really curious to see, like, how you guys who weren't around during and didn't like watch this Gamergate trash content back in the day. Like, I'm so curious to find out how you guys react to it because in some ways it's so similar to what's popular now. But in other ways like it could never it couldn't you could never make it now because it just not because it's like you'd get canceled or, or you have to be woke or anything. You couldn't make it now because people are smart enough not to fall for these arguments now. Like, the, the, the narrative has changed. This is back when the right claimed the science was on their side. You're going to notice that that's the biggest difference here. The right is going to continuously claim the science, the scientists, the, sci the medical academics, the consensus, all that, is actually on their side on these issues, which is in stark contrast to today when they claim that all of these institutions disagree with them because they've been corrupted by the left. The thing that changed this is the fact that the left started arguing with the right more competently. People started doing research and getting in debates with right-wingers, and they started citing their sources. They started citing their arguments, something right-wingers simply are incapable of because nothing they claim comes from reality. So they abandoned the idea of using cite like sources or studies to back up what they say. Some of them still do. Some of them will still try to front the like logic bro, like fact boy uh, narrative uh, and aesthetic, but... Nowadays, they're a little bit less obsessed with facts and logic and science and all that because they know it's not on their side. They don't even pretend it is now. Bill Nye got a new show for Netflix, Bill Nye Saves the World, a show dedicated to furthering the work he did all those years ago, covering new topics and the changes to the old ones since that old show went off the air in 1998. And on one episode entitled The Sexual Spectrum, yeah, he delves into explorations of sex and gender. And if there's one thing a true man of reason would never do, it's think about that stuff at all. I mean, he might be infected by uh, feminism. Who is this empowering? It's, it's empowering ignorant women. How dare ignorant people feel empowered? <laughs> we can't have that happening, said the man in the Trump hat. And as a feminazi swidge myself, I figured I'd see what all the fuss was about. Let's check the- You guys don't even know how common of a word feminazi was online. Feminazi got less Po like common of an insult as Nazi got to be less of an insult online and more of like a, a valid identity but like people just said it non-stop back when like there was still some like uh, a negative con like connotation to being a Nazi they loved saying feminazi that was like a very common insult the episode out shall we I um already saw the episode before pre-recording this mm. For a supposed Bill Nye's gone to the dog's nightmare freak show, he doesn't even really say all that much in my opinion. He does a decent baseline covering of the topic and the general state of our understanding of sex, gender, attraction and expression and how all these things are essentially separate spectrums from one another, but he doesn't really go enough into the science behind it as I'd like, and he doesn't really say anything new to someone who's already read about this stuff, so to me it was kind of disappointing. Oh, the is segment that in Korea was interesting, and it's fascinating seeing a culture with different approaches to gender norms dealing with new approaches to expression in its own way. But there's also a bunch of segments that restate what was already said, or which 
I feel should be kind of obvious by now to most people, in such a reductionist or over-the-top way that it feels like they were trying way too hard to make the topic quote-unquote entertaining, when the point of Bill Nye is that science is entertaining, you know? Science rules. The musical number with Rachel Bloom, who made Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which oh, they got so just mad be the about that show of the last two years, is... They, they got so fucking mad about this, like, musical segment in the show. And to be fair, from what I remember of the musical segment, it was pretty cringe. But it was cringe on the level of, like, uh, you know the dudes who post those memes where it's, like, female comedian, my vagina, me. And it's, like, them throwing their headphones off. Like, it, it was basically, like, cringe if you're actually that guy. Uh, it, like, like who who gets like really mad when a female comedian makes a joke about her pussy, but is fine with guys making jokes about their dicks. Because I'm gonna be honest, all guys do is make jokes about their dicks. That's all we do. We we just joke about dicks all day. That's it. Like I'm in I'm in call with my friends where we we literally say, oh, are we about to watch some more Attack on Titan? We're like, yeah, yeah, let's start cock dicking and balling. That's literally what we say when we're about to watch some Attack on Titan. We say we're gonna do some cock dicking and balling. Like. It's it's all straight dudes talk about is dicks, okay? I don't even know why I started talking about me talking about dicks. But yeah. Um, like, d dudes will get so fucking mad about, like, women making jokes about their vaginas, but meanwhile, like, all dudes joke about is dicks and balls pretty good, but says very little, and even when watching it at the time, I knew it was the thing people would point to and go, how dare you, this is so silly, I clipped this bit out of context, and now it's so over the top, my goodness, this comedy music bit, it doesn't make any careful references to studies. And there's an animated segment with ice creams that mixes its metaphors a little too much. Like, you have this vanilla ice cream, right? And he simultaneously stands for, like, oppressive religious extremism and practices like conversion therapy. But he also, like, stands for heterosexuality and people who don't accept the existence of other ones at the same time. The segment conflates physical sex, attraction, and gender expression in a way that becomes confusing and actively makes the earlier segments trying to explain the issue as simply as possible harder to understand. Then, like, they're discussing favourite flavours of ice cream when they are ice cream. Like, is this a metaphor for sex or ca cannibalism? cannibalism? Do they eat Jesus. each other? Is cannibalism legal in this ice cream based universe? How do they digest each other? I think do it's the ice about fucking. Fuck? Why I think would you it, do yeah, this? It's about this episode fucking. gets across a lot of simple ideas lots of people have hopefully seen and heard before, like that trans people exist, or that other physical, mental, psychological, and personality based aspects differentiate people far IRL. more than the genitals or chromosomes they happen to be born with. The other piece of terminology I expect a lot of people to be tripped up on is the part where he brings up the concept of gender expression. The more uninformed view of concepts like masculinity and femininity is that they're linked oh yeah you're you're in favor of trans rights name all trans people directly to a person's gender and along with that their physical sex or biology creating the expectation for prescribed roles and behaviors based on a person's sex or gender or sexual preferences but the reality Checkmate. is that we see a broad range of behaviors that take place often irrespective of these things this is something the lgbt community is far more ahead with than the mainstream take for example the concepts of butch and femme in lesbian culture these are words used to describe the personalities of lesbian women you can be a woman attracted to other women but still express this very differently from from other women attracted to women. Gender expression is a wider acknowledgement of this sort of behavior, and the idea that a person's personality is, a good is not something of inherent it. to the other aspects of their physical biology, gender, or sexuality. To put it another way- God, these old videos did such a fantastic job. Like, have you seen a modern video essayist do this good of a job at explaining this fundamental, like, idea that, like, pretty much anyone would need to agree with in order to be able to follow through on, like, being pro-trans. Like, they, I don't know why, but it just feels like, like, lefty content these days, like, particularly the video essayist content, um, which used to be, like, the top of the top shelf. Um, I, I mean, based on what we're watching, is just... I don't know, it's, it's gotten less dedicated to taking down the right, and more dedicated to just being, like, artsy kind of like, expressions of their own beliefs. But back then, there was more of this, like, environment of needing to convince your audience, like, not to... 
bomb your channel into oblivion i guess like any a lot of this is literally just the fact that any lefty content creator back then had to be extremely good at explaining why they believe what they believe or they would just have i mean they would still have this regardless but this would help minimize it just a ridiculous amount of hate in their comment section just hate bomb after hate bomb um so it's kind of understandable why these videos are so good at explaining themselves on their own um but they, they don't really do that anymore. Like, these YouTubers don't really do... There's a skeleton around burning somewhere. Um, they don't really, like, explain these fundamental ideas that I think are really important, you know? Like, the idea of what is gender identity compared to gender itself? What is sex as opposed to gender? Why are... Why do people say that gender isn't binary? What does non-binary mean? Like, these fundamental ideas that you guys... I see you guys get annoyed in chat when I spend too much time explaining these fundamental basic ideas. But the reason I do it is because there could always be just some random Zoomer, like, uh, Chud, who clicks on one of my videos and, like, that video is their first and possibly maybe only ever exposure to progressive values, um, or at least modern progressive values. Like, I'd hope that um, those fundamental ideas can be imparted because for a lot of people... Like to get them on board with a lot of progressive values, you have to kind of go down this this totem pole of beliefs. Like first, like before you can even get someone to believe that like trans people deserve the right to have access to gender affirming care. Like you have to start by explaining how gender and sex aren't the same thing. You have to like then explain what gender dysphoria is and like the existence of like people who internally understand that their gender is something different from what they were assigned at birth and that that internal feeling is something we know is real and not only that we know it's is real but that the treatment for it is to transition and not only that but the um but that the lives of those people are helped m massively by being uh, validated by friends and family we found diamonds let's fucking go the diamonds say trans rights are you serious? Oh, there we go. Knew it. I knew it wasn't just going to be a two-diamond vein. I know there's another one here. Come on. Was it really a threefer? Seriously? One of those shitty three veins? I mean, at le it's enough to make a pick. It's enough to make a pick, and that's what matters. It's enough to make a pick. Way, I might be male, and you might be male. But regardless, we both express maleness in different ways from each other, and have yeah. to define for ourselves what it means to even be male in the first place. These sides of human behaviour are fascinating and still developing fields of study, and the way they're glossed over by being talked about very briefly, or turning up in the form of a mint chocolate chip ice cream, fails to really get these ideas across very well, either in terms of summing up a subject you might be already familiar with, or in introducing it to you for the first time. It gave a rudimentary comedically some of the the biggest issues with let like and this is what bill nye's special was a, a left-wing uh bit of media was that it came off very it, it it tried too hard to come off as this weird like gen x millennial humor like re hashtag resistance democrat appealing like I almost can't even put into words the general vibe that this type of content had. All I can say is, teenage me was repulsed by it. The vibe of, of like, millennial liberal content that was made for millennial and Gen X liberals literally made, like, marginally progressive teenage me feel fucking repulsed. That's the only way I can describe it slanted description of sex, gender, identity, and expression that feels in itself a little too reductionist to be useful. It basically tells you that these things exist, which, yeah. I have my own criticisms of the show, but I expect the rational raisins and smarty pants scar bands of the world to have their own very different problems with the show. Let's look at a few in more detail and see if their problems hold water. Here's a video by one of YouTube's most prominent skeptics, and you know he's skeptical because he put it in his name! Uh. Armored Skeptic. I'm going to be using clips from God. both his video and uh, various episodes of the He fell off pretty hard, show. apparently. So to make sure I'm not taking anything out of context, I highly re it, Listen, if I, from my understanding, all I've been told is like, don't go to Armored Skeptic's channel if you don't want to be like depressed. Because like, he fell off hard. And it's kind of like in a sad way, apparently. 
Zan, why are you strip mining? Branch mining is so much better. What's branch mining? I'm pretty certain I'm... If branch mining is what... That, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm... I'm I, that's what I thought I was doing at least is I'm digging this straight line and then I dig out these branches and if I hit any ore then I go and I collect it. It's been pretty good so far. I got three diamonds with it and, you know, we're we're popping off. Yeah, what what is branch mining? Is that like a different I, I can't think of any other Y eleven like horizontal mining method that would be more efficient than what I'm doing now. I recommend that you watch his video and the show for yourself first. Uh, the links are in the description and by Netflix. The first segment is a skit where his persona argues with another version of himself, uh, voiced by himself. Mondo respect, I think the guy's onto something with that. He goes into an episode by episode breakdown, summing up his opinion on each. The episode that deals with sex and gender is episode 9, but I'll briefly point out some aspects of Skeptic's perspective, god that's a tongue twister, on earlier episodes that I regard as illustrative of problems with his approach. Episode 1 was all about climate change, and this is how he talks about it. Uh -oh. The first episode is about climate change, and I was a little apprehensive about this one because this is Bill's subject, but it was great. Bill was a little awkward in front of the live audience, but that only really added to the charm. He doesn't get too political, he doesn't use too mm -hmm. much hyperbole, he demonstrates how climate change is affecting the planet today, and even doesn't get too political. ways engineers are dealing with these problems. I even liked the panel. He had some guy on who said that he wanted the entire- Remember guys, like one of the most common like narratives pushed by the right back then was that the left is trying to make everything political. The left is trying to push politics on you. We're trying to save you from having to be attacked with politics constantly by the left. United States to be renewable and another guy on the panel was like no that's a fantasy world it was great it was really well balanced I mean no he didn't have any climate change skeptics or anything but you know what I mean he congratulates the panel for being well balanced the focus is on balance on not taking a side so is balance what we saw in that panel Professor Mark Jacobson outlines that while it may sound impossible to some people, it is absolutely possible to make mankind's energy infrastructure completely renewable. The main barriers are social and political. You can see how this science professor might have to risk getting a bit political here, you know, to fix the, the part where we all d might die if it's not taking care you can see how it might politics might have to come into it at some it's point a little bit political meanwhile richard martin my main man dick mart thinks we can't it's get utopian political and guys unrealistic to think that even though it's literally possible to actually do there are many people in the world who dismiss ideas that actually could work in practice and we know that because it's possible to check because they've decided it's too utopian he all but complains that there's no magic money tree where have we heard that before he offers an alternative in the form of nuclear energy Jacobs retorts that the time it would take to get the many thousands of nuclear power plants required to supplant traditional ones approved and built would fail to correct our impact on the climate in time. Dick Mart has no retort mm. to this. He just kind of Good continues cheering. harping on how crazy it would be to do the thing that we statistically could do if we got our shit together. Like, bro, you're trying to convince, like, millions of Americans to allow dozens of thousands more nuclear plants into their backyard? You gotta fucking explain how it'll work. I even liked the panel. He had some guy on who said that he wanted the entire United States to be renewable, and another guy on the panel was like, no, that's a fantasy world. It was great. It was really well balanced. According to Skeptic, the panel is one person saying, I want America to be... The reason why it's great is that he had someone on there to say, no, renewable energy is bad. We shouldn't try to strive to make America fully renewable or even part like largely renewable, a, like a large, a very significant vibe that you'll find in this content from this era was that it was all centered around the idea of not having to do anything like the left is freaking out and they want you to do things. But nothing needs to be done. They're just freaking out over nothing. Ignore them. They're just trying to push politics on you. They make everything political. You, you know what's not political, though? Look at my videos, where we make fun of the left. This is us fighting against politics, because we're apolitical, and the left, they're the ones pushing politics and everything. That, like, that's what, it, that's what it was. Like, progressive content creators back then had to literally explain that everything's political, 
Everything is this Shu's ex boyfriend? Yes, this is Shu's ex boyfriend. They were dating at the time. You can kind of see there's a trend in like uh, the more conservative the the values are. Um, maybe she's the one that makes people conservative. Maybe it was the other way around. He got more va he got more progressive uh, after they break broke up. Maybe uh, maybe she was making armored skeptic right wing. We had it all wrong. We had had it all turned around. All right, there we go. Crops harvested. This really wishful thinking pie in the sky thing, like to have the entire United States be renewable, and another person being more realistic and dismissing it as a fantasy. Something skeptic has primed you to believe is a fantasy because he set it up like that. It feels like he's projected his ideas of the social justice warrior versus reasonable rational thinker discussion onto this subject. The problem with thinking this panel is balanced, or is supposed to try to be balanced, is that science isn't balanced. One of these guys was right. One of these guys you can check yep. and it's actually true. The other guy was just, ah, oh, it's, it's utopian, it's, just can't do it. Let's build uh, thousands of nuclear plants faster than we've ever done before with magic. That'll solve it. He doesn't get too political. I'm just gonna laser focus <laughs> on this for a second. I love Skeptic the- I just love the, the clip of him saying he doesn't get too political. And in discussing climate change, something that is like imminently projected to result in massive amounts of, uh, um, uh, climate refugee, uh, like a massive climate refugee cl crisis is like imminent, you know? Like, if you think climate change isn't political right now, my friends, it's gonna get real fucking political when climate refugees start flooding into America and Europe, especially fucking Europe. Europe is going to be absolutely flooded with climate refugees in the coming years. And some comments we'll see later. To think that being rational and objective relies on not being too politically biased. But if you, for example, don't want mankind to die out or want things to get better for people, and your focus is on finding ways to do this, using science and facts and truth, then you are unavoidably going to get political. The current, though hopefully not for long, Prime Minister of my country closed a group investigating climate change and is about to get into bed with the DUP, Jeez. a group that known Morris for, Johnson? among other things, thinking being gay is a sin and- Wait, the DUP from Infamous Second Son? Those are bad guys, holy shit. Climate change denial, and the current head of state in Sorry, the USA thinks global warming was created by the Chinese in order to make US manufacturing oh. non-competitive. When you say climate change is real, and people who don't think that are full of shit, you're inherently making a political statement, because people in politics act based on views like this. When you say you would prefer for the climate to not drastically change in a way that would be unfortunate for the bulk of humanity, you are unavoidably making a political statement. This kind of writing implies skeptic. I love that he has to explain this fundamental to to fact. I worry skeptic is trying to depoliticize a scientific problem that is very political indeed. This is just me speculating, but I'm struck with the sense that upon reaching more contentious episodes based on science he's less familiar with, or which relate to pressing social and political issues of the day, Skeptic was annoyed by Nye's alternative conclusions or ideas, and rather than disagreeing with them for academic reasons, he takes the view that he gets too political, and therefore the bits he does like must have been less political, right? But here's the problem with that view. What can we, as as non-scientists, as non-brilliant engineers, do? I'm trying to be a realist. Here. Vote. Yes. Yeah. Fucking vote. If you, yeah. if you don't want to vote, if you don't want to vote. Would you just shut up <laughs> and let True. the rest of us who are interested, to, you know, participate in our future? He communicates True. that the episode isn't too political when Bill Nye overtly asks the audience to vote which maybe would suggest not voting for people Base who think the entire issue is fake. He's being positive about this episode to gear you up for when he gets political later by saying things he didn't already agree with, so he compliments the parts of the show he happens to agree with for not being too political. But Nye literally told you to vote based on the science. I would argue that the section of the show where Nye desperately shouts vote directly into the camera lens is one of the most overtly political things he does in the entire show. But remember, did, um, I, I think we might have watched the uh, alt-right playbook video uh, specifically about this phenomenon, but in these social spaces on the right, political means something that the community has not come to agree on. So saying Nazis are bad is political because not everyone agrees with that. Saying Nazis are good isn't political because it's clearly just trolling, because people don't really, you know, typically agree with it. It doesn't make any sense, but, like, 
th that's how these people think. Basically, it's just to chalk up anything that, like, is inconvenient for them to seem like a joke. It's just, it's that's all it is. They just want to chalk up anything that looks inconvenient for them to believe or say or do as a joke. Yes, it is very smooth-brained. I'm willing to bet a climate change denier would criticize this episode for being way too political. The place where I disagree with Skeptic and my purely theoretical, incredibly stupid climate change denier who bears no relation to Steven Crowder is that I think these problems inevitably have political implications and exploring them is intellectually honest and necessary for effecting positive True. change. By pretending this isn't the case, Skeptic is setting himself up for the parts he doesn't like being bad simply by nature of being political. This episode is very clearly politically driven. When he talks about episode 2, he complains about the segment where Prashanth criticizes the use of Asian mysticism imagery in Quack Healing to try and boost its cred, and he talks about it like this. A man named Prashant gets up on the stage, almost as if he was going to perform a stand-up routine. But instead of making me laugh, he made me angry. He made me very, very angry. Prashant's lecture... I, so, <laughs> that, that may sound like, why is he admitting that he's triggered? That might be what you're thinking right now, but like, there was, there was this, this sort of like idea of the of the upset intellectual who is so you know set on facts and logic that this this uh sjw propaganda you know triggers them in fact and that's not being triggered like lefties are it's not the same so you wouldn't make fun of them for it but but yeah that that's the joke there that's pretty much it I'm trying- I'm doing social analysis of, of this propaganda, okay? The entire it's old propaganda. white race on how it's unacceptable to use Asian mysticism what? because it's from a different culture. The entire but, white race? Li li listen, listen, I know that it's tempting to do this. I know how so many people think that they've figured out the formula, but this needs to end. If you think that you're that one person in the entire universe who's figured out a way to talk down to an entire race of people and lecture them on how to behave, without coming across as a racist asshole stop they, because you have they they loved calling brown people that like criticize like they loved calling brown people that say white privilege exists the real racists like if a, if a lefty brown person was like white people have privilege in these areas they'd be like yeah it's honestly pretty racist for you to say that white people are superior or even to say that they'll even argue that like they're racist against white people but oftentimes it would be this like smug like hmm you think white people have privilege you think they're better than the non-white people that sounds like you're the real racist here and it's like that's not what privilege is that's that's not what privilege is we everyone here knows you're being dishonest come on I haven't figured it out it's impossible but, get this though prashant says that he doesn't believe down. in asian mysticism and he says that he doesn't like asian mysticism in fact he says that he hates it so why does it even matter who does it then? Are you're trying to hog a part of your culture that cringe. you hate all to yourself? That doesn't even make any sense. What That's the not fuck what he does said. that have to do with science? What does this have to do with saving the world? I saw this. World? What this, even like, is this? Why special. the fuck That's is not somebody what the guy talking said. about the white race was, on the bill? Now? I saw that special. I remember what the guy he's talking about said. He was complaining about like white women who do astrology y using like fake like stereotypical asian mysticism as their aesthetic in order to convince people there's authenticity to their weird white girl bullshit nice show after this i'm i'm pissed i'm trying to watch the third episode but i'm the, my blood is Boiling. Boiling. Okay, this segment Jesus. is actually fascinating in numerous He's ways so and almost makes me question Skeptic's intellectual honesty in regards to accurately presenting the content of the show. It contains numerous falsehoods and omissions. The first false assertion is that this segment is about how Prashanth was mad at white people for appropriating a culture that wasn't theirs. Prashanth lectured the entire white race on how it's unacceptable to use Asian mysticism because it's from a different culture. I don't want to do this to Skeptic, yep, but that's just not true. That isn't what happened here. 
Skeptic is attempting to accuse video, him of arguing I've about seen the cultural appropriation, to right now. but he's actually talking about the well-known problem of quacks attempting to hide pseudoscience behind Asian mysticism. So you say it's magic and that it cures gout, and for good measure you throw in a Ganesh statue just to give it this ancient wisdomy feel. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Prashanth even name drops an infamous example who is himself of Asian descent, so he's definitely not talking about appropriation. It's actually the oldest trick in the book, half nonsense, half Indian. It's called the deep Chopra. <laughs> Why the fuck is somebody talking about the so white race on the Bill Nye show? It seems like Skeptic heard Prashanth say, hey, white people, and then he like turned his brain off. Uh, Armored Skeptic heard that name and was like, yep, white person. And didn't like, didn't see this bit? Like, I'm genuinely curious if he remembers this part. The second false assertion is that this is a lecture, a man talking down to a group of people in some kind of mad, antagonistic, puritanical screed. This inaccurately represents the tone of the segment. Let's play back one of the brief clips Skeptic uses of this part on mute, but with the sound on this time. White people, I love you. But stop using Asian wallpaper for street cred. I see what you're doing. This segment is a stand-up comedy yeah, routine. The man performing this skit is a stand-up comedian. Part of the joke is the hyperbolic way he's talking down to entire races of people. That Remember though, guys, at this time, the idea was that the left is anti-comedy. The left doesn't make jokes. Anything the left says that sounds like hyperbolic and insane don't even entertain the possibility it was a joke said in jest. They 100% mean it, and you should take the most uncharitable view of what they said. Because the left is anti-humor, remember that. They hate jokes. The left can't meme after all. Yeah, they love saying that. That's right. Races. Which is why I want to say something to my fellow Asians. Asians, lend me your ears. Stop convincing white people it is real. This is as much on you as it is on them. You know how gullible they are. <laughs> Prashanth That's is being pretty superlative for comedic effect to get across a quite genuine idea, and the audience is laughing along with it. This isn't a lecture. Like, he's literally having to explain, in a video responding to anti-SJW YouTubers, that le a leftist, or a progressive, not even a progressive, it doesn't even have to be a progressive, just someone who is brown and thus presumably progressive, because they're, I guess, taking progressive stances on these issues, uh, it, like, they, they assume it's got to be, like, some rant about white people, but it's very clearly just jokes. Right-wingers are so, so easy to trigger, but they, they project that onto the left, and it, it always turns out, it always turns into funny situations like this. During the slightest. The third false assertion is this one. And he says that he doesn't like Asian mysticism. In fact, he says that he hates it. Prashanth never says anything like this. He doesn't hate Asian culture. He hates it being used to sell remedies with no basis in science, regardless of race. Asians, stop selling unregulated remedies with no scientific basis. And white people, stop using Asian culture to sell unregulated remedies with no scientific proof. Look, I get that cultural appropriation and how it's not a problem is a popular talking point in the skeptic community, but yep. that doesn't necessarily mean everyone is always talking about appropriation. And treating this segment like one has caused skeptic to miss out on a point that I'm actually like 99% sure he agrees with. These assertions are wrong, but, you know, probably people does agree make with that mistakes point, and enough. have biases that impact how they view things. That's okay, I do that too all the time. But where it gets kind of shady is when you stop and realize how this video is seemingly constructed on purpose to make sure someone watching this review without having seen the show wouldn't possibly be able to notice these claims are false. I'm gonna think like a it's video It's not made for people who've seen it. When Skeptic was making this video, he had this episode of the show open in his timeline and he was scrubbing through it to look for bits of the show to put in his video to demonstrate problems or events he's describing. Prashanth makes his hyperbolic jokes and people laugh and then he talks about a genuine manipulative tactic used by pseudoscientific quacks. When Skeptic talks about this section and how racist it was and how angry it made him, he shows only this brief clip with the show's closed captions turned on. He uses the section most easily interpretable to make this section be what he thinks it's about, namely an Asian man racisting at white people, and the clip doesn't continue long enough to get to the actual meat of his real, though comedically slanted, argument. 
Also, I think this is accidental. There's another subtly manipulative thing happening here. You see, in some segments, Skeptic uses clips from the episode with the sound on so he can show them saying the thing and respond to it. This would be one of the prime sections to do it, right? Like, he spends a good portion of this video that harping on this segment. Though, to do he that. talks about this bit of this episode more than he does for several entire episodes collectively. It would make sense to show the clip of him saying this and let us hear it. But if he did that... I see what you're doing. You'd hear people laughing. A no Prashanth was ultimately making a joke, and this wouldn't jibe yep. well with skeptics' view that this was some kind of serious racist lecture at white people. Similarly, when he claims Prashanth says he hates it, like this is why even for like some of these figures, I have a hard time really accepting that they've changed. Because even back when they were making this content, you have to know that you were like at the very least bending reality a bit there of what you were presenting to your audience to push the narrative you agree with or that you know like will make you the most money because it's the right wingers that are most dedicated that pay the most i don't know asian culture it would have really supported his argument to show the clip of him you know saying that or put it in the background while he talked but he didn't use that clip because that clip doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. If he'd used a clip of Prashanth saying he hates when Asian culture is used to take people's money and sell forms of treatment or medicine that don't work, that would make him look like he was saying that, wouldn't it? So he couldn't use that. I'd also like to go back and point out that he doesn't use any supplemental footage of the panel he talked about in episode one. I think if it had happened the way he thought it did, he would have had footage to call on here, but instead, its absence is rendered palpable. I don't think this is purposeful dishonesty. I think Skeptic had simply already arrived at his conclusions when he'd written his script, and when he was editing the video together, he just didn't notice the show isn't really saying what he thought it was saying. If you don't notice someone saying something you would probably agree with because of a little joke they made, it makes this video end up saying more about Skeptic's personal approach to watching media than the show itself, which I don't mm. think is what he was going for. This is, to put it that simply, political and ideological bias in action, and I think this is why Skeptic didn't enjoy the show. He even dismisses Prashanth's segment as if it looked like it was going to be stand-up but wasn't. Now, Prashanth is literally a comedian. I could make a defense of his act, you know, comedians like to push at boundaries and that includes racial ones, point out that it's important to defend their right to do that, That's... and also alleged mischaracterizing of people's racially charged jokes is something he himself has they were so, these videos were so good at using the rights game against them. Railed against in the past, but I'm not going to do that here because it's time to talk about the actual episode this whole video is about, which Skeptic addresses for most of the second half of this video. Bill uses the term cis male. Who better to talk about <laughs> sex than two? I love somebody who's screaming about like how he loves science getting mad about the word cis. They think the word cis was invented on, like, Tumblr or something. I think it comes from chemistry. Cis male white guys. Cringe. This part of the video strikes me as really odd. Skeptic implies, quite overtly, that using words like cis is inherently a bad thing, but it's the counterpart prefix to trans and a very useful term when discussing these ideas. Unless, of course, he's not trying to imply that using the term cis is inherently bad. Maybe he just disagrees with the nomenclature. I mean, many writers in this field do prefer terms like non-trans as a way of making the subject easier to understand. But he doesn't elaborate further than saying cringe, so all I have to go on is skeptic saying Bill Nye said a word, and it made him feel weird. Bill explains that there is no way to gender a brain by examining it, and then explains that just like biology, gender is also on a spectrum. Bill does not take this opportunity to discuss the connection between biology and gender. Instead, he just explains the spectrum as if there is no correlation between sex and gender. I found this a little disappointing because I wanted to know That's what, not what he would have said know about gender identity. But instead, Bill just shrugs and moves on. Listen, Greg, you know, if you wanted to know what the scientists think about this, you didn't have to wait until Bill Nye got a new show, like, 20 years later to find out. You can just, like, check. You can look it up. <laughs> Bill Nye is not the only source for what the scientists think about this. The previous episodes of the show, which he had less of a problem- This was the moment I snapped out of the anti-SJW thing, the moment one of my favorite YouTubers got mad about a medical term being used, kinda had me do a double take. Yeah. That- it, it definitely- that'll shake you. 
That'll shake your adherence to these ideas when you start to realize, wait a second, these YouTubers are screaming and angry about a scientist talking about science, and they're claiming they're the ones who are pro-reality and science? Okay. Problem with also don't cite the evidence in the precise way that he seems to expect, specifically when it's on a topic that he doesn't agree with or know much about. Nye doesn't bring up the specifics of forcing or the ice sheets or planetary albedo in the climate change video, but that doesn't mean you should just assume there is no science and it doesn't exist, unless of course you're Steven Crowder. The show is simply trying to find a way to explain these topics to a general audience in a way that's not too complicated. And that's alright. Bill calls the fourth one expression. It's the way people express their gender. Bill, um, uh, Bill, uh, what's the difference between gender and gender expression? What even is gender expression? A good portion of this section of the video is skeptic incredulously asking questions he could literally look up in a matter of seconds. What is gender expression? How does it relate to gender? Is there a correlation with biology? Like, what percentage of the population expresses? There's a little secret with gender expression. It, it's, it, it's made up. It's fashion. It's fucking fashion. It's fashion. Now, maybe it's wrong to hold Skeptic to the same standards he holds Bill Nye to, I mean, Bill Nye is working on a fully produced show with a team of writers and researchers and, yes, comedians. But, well, Skeptic doesn't explain either what the scientists think or why they think this, or what the science is to support this conclusion he makes. He doesn't cite any sources to support this himself, he complains Bill Nye isn't being scientific enough, and then in the next few sentences leaps directly into an unsupported conclusion. He even, and this is the interesting part I wanted to get to, makes this comment. There aren't even any statistics or studies or psychological papers or polls or anything. Okay, here we are, the brass ring. This is what we in the tennis commentating business call an unforced error. For... wait, no, that's... that's golf. You see, when he dismisses this as fashion, there's some ambiguity there. If he just said that, you could interpret this as him saying he's done some research into the topic and come to the conclusion based on his reading that gender expression is a useless term. You'd wonder what he'd read and how he came to that conclusion, but you'd at least be able to credibly assume he'd looked at the academic writing on the subject at some point. But then he directly says no research has been done and no papers <coughs> have been written. And then, to make sure you know- That was legitimately the level of engagement from these people back then on this issue. They just kind of said, no research has been done on the issue of trans people. We don't know yet. That that was pretty, that was, that was it. And they just kind of really, really betted on their audience, not thinking too far into it. And that's really what the right-wingers nowadays do, but they argue points that are harder to prove with hard evidence, because they know that, you know, or to disprove with hard evidence, or to prove with hard evidence. They argue more abstract ideas. No, that's what he meant. He says it again. Bill says science is the process we use to understand nature, but there is no science about gender expression, Bill. That was just fucking nonsense. So, I'm beginning to see why Skeptic had a problem with this episode. This episode would be really bad if it was based in absolutely no science, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, if you think that, I have some bad news for you. You might be wondering what these weird words and names and texts scrolling past the screen are right now. These are just a short list of peer-reviewed papers and studies specifically into gender expression and the nature of its relation with gender identity and biology. And believe me, this is a short list. You can find a much longer list by looking for the studies. So now, you and I know that there are studies into this. But Skeptic seemingly doesn't. He openly, directly denies they exist. How do you explain this discrepancy? Now, the cynical conclusion, the one I doubt, is that he doesn't care about the truth really, and he thinks his yep. audience is stupid enough to not check for themselves, and they'll just nod in agreement with a statement that can. So what he's doing right now is outright stating what he knows to be true, but he's doing it in sort of a sarcastic way. Um, because he knows what, just stating it would be insulting to the viewers that are watching from these YouTubers, and it comes off as bad faith, right? And so he's stating, 
I'm not saying that these, you know, that armored skeptic doesn't care about the truth, and he was just saying what he thought he could get away with, but, you know. What other conclusion could you draw from this? Confirms their own unresearched beliefs, but I think the alternative is more likely. Skeptic assumed there hadn't been any research, and it didn't occur to him to check. This is a pretty big error, like, it's very quick to check, and the studies that result from checking are very informative and interesting, and challenge the idea yep. that gender expression is made up and equivalent to just trying to be fashionable. Even if these studies are flawed, or Skeptic could offer an alternative reading that justifies the idea it's fashion, he doesn't provide that analysis here, and also he can't, because he doesn't seem to know they exist. Which is kind of a, pr kind of a problem when they do. Now, this is where I was hoping to get into the meat of the video, right? Like, discuss interpretations and conclusions of studies and data. But we got all the way here, and it turns out that you, the viewing audience, are going to be denied the money shot of raw, hardcore data analysis because Gargle Septic has no data supporting his argument to analyze. He has no criticism of the existing studies, which exist for me to debunk, and in fact he denies the existence of those studies. So even pointing out that yes, studies exist, the most rudimentary point possible, is enough to completely dash his entire argument <laughs> against the rocks of reality. All his claims about gender expression, that it's all just fashion, etc., are predicated on the non-existence of scientific examinations that actually do exist. Even if those studies themselves proved that it was all just fashion and fake, how would he know? He simply hasn't checked. Maybe he has an epistemological problem with those studies, but to find that out, he would have to check they exist, and see they exist, and read them, and talk about them, and he's done none of those things. That's not the application of reason at all. Checking to see if studies into this exist takes literally as long as it takes a Google search to resolve, which in my case was 0.6 seconds. That's yep. the quickest debunking I've ever had to do. There's two very clear reasoning problems here. The first is that, without any significant explanation that this is the case, Skeptic situates its fake and all just fashion as the null hypothesis for gender expression. He makes this the natural baseline from which all other conclusions must prove their case, but his of course doesn't have to because he's decided it's the default state. This conveniently frees him from having to prove his assertions without any evidence. This is just the way things are, and if Bill Nye doesn't prove otherwise, or I can't find any studies showing otherwise <laughs> because I can't find them or didn't look for them, then I have to be right, and I don't even have to prove it. This is the exact sort of shifting True. of the burden of proof the atheist skeptic circle will be highly familiar with if they've ever encountered a presuppositionalist theist. Someone whose central arguments amounted to- You have to remember, guys, the anti-SJW movement was built on YouTubers who claimed they were liberal atheists who were pushed to the positions they're in now by the left going crazy and becoming more like evangelical Christian right-wingers. That was their claim. That the, that the left had become the new evangelical, insane, cultural, insanity, uh, satanic panic uh, weirdos insisting that God's existence is how one should naturally assume the world is, and it's up to disbelievers to prove God doesn't exist, meaning they could dismiss people merely skeptical of positive proof without having to ever bother paying attention to what they have to say. Combine this with a disastrous inability or unwillingness to understand science or how evidence works, and they've built themselves a perfect box from which they'll never have to even think about leaving. Skeptic would doubtless see this flawed logic in an instant if he ever saw Seit and Bruggenkate making this kind of argument. But substitute the existence of God for the non-existence of gender expression, and here he is making that argument. Bill says, We need to go with the science. And the science says we're all on a spectrum. Um... No. Um... Yes. Yes! It's a trend. <laughs> it's trendy for boys to wear me. That was really good. That was really good, just scrolling all the studies up the screen, like a million of them. It's trendy for girls to wear bow ties. That's it. Don't push it, Greg. You know for a fact that bow ties make anyone sexier, regardless of gender identity. Speaking of which, this bow tie was actually made for me by my mother. I wore this to a wedding. I was gonna put a joke here, but I just like this bow tie. Very quickly, what should we name our wiener dog? We finally got a wiener dog that isn't gonna die. What do I name it? Kelbasa? That's real good. That's really nice. Thanks, Mum. Then they proceed to give in to their urges and start licking each other like a bunch of fucking sluts. What? You know, I didn't like this segment either, but I wouldn't personally have slut-shamed the ice cream. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, I just realized the words that I said. I mean, maybe I have it all wrong. Maybe Jesus. it was just played for laughs, you know, like this is, maybe this is intentionally absurdist. Really? What gave it away, Greg? What part of the comedy cartoon ice cream licking party came across to you as absurd? <laughs> Kielbasa. <laughs> Bill then uses mannequins to demonstrate that sex and gender are not really set in stone, biology isn't always clear-cut, and that the whole thing is relative. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. If this was Bill's intended message, then I have to commend Bill for saying this. Tolerance of people who don't fit social and biological norms is important. We don't oh. have to try to understand or relate to LGBT people, but we can at least treat them like human beings. Even if oh, you are nice. what they call a trans trender, I don't care. Be whatever flavor of ice cream you want to be. The message of tolerance is a good one, and I fully agree with that part. I've interrogated some of his arguments yes, and laughed at his weird comments about the slutty ice creams, but I think it's really important that I leave this bit in here. A good portion of my response today has been about the often accidental duplicitousness of video editing, and I feel like not putting this segment in here uh, would imply that he doesn't say stuff like that, and I couldn't abide doing that, so I thought I'd leave it in here. He puts this in here specifically because he knows there are people out there who think that trans and non-binary people don't have a right to exist, or in fact don't exist at all, and it's all just mentally ill people or trenders who are pretending. And it's important to take a stance against people being ridiculously shitty like that, even if the science didn't shake out in favour of their existence, which it does. The problem with Skeptic's mm -hmm. video has nothing to do with any explicit bigotry, it's more to do with how he grasped the science and how he approached the show itself. And for a person who calls themselves a skeptic, not being willing to check if they're wrong by looking up the science constitutes something of a problem that I think is worth talking about. While I have very often and repeatedly satirized the language and implied values of the so-called skeptic community, I do actually also believe that skepticism and reason and facts and logic and evidence and all those other buzzwords are- You, you guys just- you, you can't even imagine if you weren't there how fedora-tipping virginal this era of YouTube was. Just everybody being such a Ben Shapiro watching facts and logic bro at that time. And the idea that like, just, just, just the idea that trans people weren't part of some trend was something that would like, saying that I, uh, that belief would get you so much shit. To like express the idea that you were pro-trans would, would destroy you online at that time. Like, people would say, huh, tech helicopter. Like, it's bad now, but there are places where it's not bad right now. There was pretty much nowhere where it wasn't bad back then. I'm sure there were some corners of the internet that were pro-trans, but broadly speaking, the broader culture, very, very much anti pretty much any progressive value. ...are actually important. They do mean something, and they are worth thinking about. Greg doesn't seem like a bad person to me. You know, I make these videos and sometimes I'm really mocking of people either to be over the top because I think it's funny or because I know their minds won't be changed because they're just so far out there. I'm curious now that I've definitively made him aware that the subjects exist if he does watch this video, if Skeptic will change his mind in accordance with the evidence or at least develop nope. a new perspective on the issues based on the stuff that I've pointed out. I think this is actually the first time I've genuinely thought Maybe some progress is going to happen here. Maybe someone's going to watch this and go, Oh man, there is science and I missed it. That would be really interesting, wouldn't it? Although honestly, given the speed that discourse moves at on the internet, maybe he's already developed his opinion further. I don't have the time to watch all of everyone's videos nowadays because I'm so busy making my own stuff or, you know, reading the studies. Science. Uh, speaking of time, I did not intend now. for this video to get this you won't long. Get I was going to cover a whole greenhouse. bunch of people in this video, and I ended up getting sidetracked completely by just one. Gosh. I've got to be at the airport in like... 12 minutes?! This is a good video. That was a really good video. I like H-Bomber Guy's stuff. And that video is just such a time capsule, isn't it? Of that era of online politics. Do we want to watch part two? I'm I'm down for for us to watch the full two-parter in one whole segment. I'm down. I'm down if you guys are. I remember feel like when I was a zoomer, like a little zoomer lad feeling like something was off when all these content creators started shitting on um 
Bill Nye. I feel like, because like Bill Nye was somebody that I kind of knew sort of intrinsically was a trustworthy figure and that all these YouTubers I was watching now were going against Bill Nye. It, it, it definitely, it, it gave me a weird feeling. I remember that. Okay, stop effing, please. Ah, it's good to be back. When we last left off, I performed raw, hardcore, mostly uncensored analysis of all of Armored Skeptic's <laughs> data supporting his view of gender expression, which didn't take too long because he didn't have any. This time, we're going to do some more of that about some more people. Nothing particularly unique this time. I just thought it'd be nice to cover a few more people. I wanted to do more last nice. time, but the video started to feel like it was dragging, you know? Let's have another look and see if there are any decent rebuttals to Nye's recent work. We'll be looking there for a couple of basic things, like if the arguments actually hold water when you look at them, uh, if they have any uh, sources or data that they cite, if they put it in the description so people can click to check if it's actually right or not. Uh, you know, really basic stuff like that. I'm sure that's a low bar that no one will be tripped over, right? Who's first? Well, there's this oh, mouthy shit. Buddha guy. His attempts to oh, criticize no. Rachel Bloom's musical segment caused him to devolve into screaming, My pussy, over and over until he was literally just reverberating and pulling a stupid face. <laughs> my pussy! My pussy, my pussy talks! My pussy. My pussy. He seems like a lovely individual. He's using that a very popular a rhetorical strategy of acting like a fucking idiot and then saying, That's what I think feminism is. Me being stupid proves they're stupid. I put some jokes at his expense in the last video and I thought it would be funny to just use that clip of him doing that and then not go back to him ever again. But even if I wanted to do more than that, I'd have some trouble because the video is mostly just him whining about how morally evil it is that Rachel That's Bloom empowered Buddha looks like. ignorant women and how betrayed he feels by Bill Nye for not saying what he decided was true about the issue. You name the smartest people in the world. They all think this gender fluidity shit is bullshit. No evidence is necessary to support his beliefs, apparently. Who is this empowering? It's, it's empowering ignorant women. People that you are dancing with are making our civilized Western culture more and more degenerate every day. I thought feminists were worthless and unproductive members of society, but according to genius non-foot shooter Mouthy Buddha, ah, it turns fuck. out that actually Western civilization is so weak and vulnerable what? that Why? Rachel Bloom can destroy it with a song about her vagina. Listen, mate, if you think our great civilization is that weak, maybe you should- So, like, now now you guys know what I was talking about earlier with the, um, the dudes who lose their shit about female comedians making a joke about their pussy. But meanwhile, dudes just non-stop joke about their dicks and balls. That's what we do all day. That's our shit. We love joking about dicks and balls. It's a pastime. Oh my god, another one. Jesus. There's usually a bunch of those little purple Furby things, but never the caterpillars that you're meant to feed them to. But now it's the other way around. Bizarre. Should move somewhere else, presumably back to the spitting image puppet dimension. His other videos try really hard to be dramatic pseudo-documentaries with text effects, ornate fonts, <laughs> and important sounding music as he talks in a dramatic voice about how IQ is totally a real measurement of human ability and behavior. We need True. to understand the validity of IQ, to know that this is real and predictive of human behavior. You know, for someone who seems incredibly certain that IQ is a valid and important unit of measuring a person's intelligence, Mouthy Buddha doesn't appear to have listed his own IQ anywhere. I invite you to come to the one conclusion there can be about Take why you wouldn't do Take an IQ test in my house. These videos attempt- We'll bring- we'll bring the- we'll get the packet the little paper packet with the little seal on it, and we'll get like an official from the uh, the state to come and and monitor it, like the full legit IQ test shebang, not the online IQ test, the real thing. We'll do the whole thing. 
Uh, to create the illusion that he's smart and needs to be taken seriously. The, the reason why Nazis care so much about IQ, by the way, is because they believe there is a connection between race and IQ that is deterministic of crime. They believe that black people inherently have lower IQs because of, like, if you look at statistics on average in America, it is true that black students, this is usually what's studied, black students have lower IQs than white students. However, the, so, like the entire scientific consensus on that issue, the reason for that is due to the fact that black students have less opportunities and that one's IQ is shaped heavily by their environmental upbringing. And that's suggested by the fact that black students who have like more money in their family than white students have higher IQs than those white students. So yeah, it, it, it like they they want they want so badly to be able to prove that like black people are inferior with the IQ point thing. Seriously, but he's already put out a video where he whines and vibrates at a camera, so the genie's out of the bottle there, mate. While I could point and laugh at how he's a libertarian trying desperately to backpedal from supporting the alt right after realizing that his bedfellows don't seem to realize that eugenics is unethical or pretend. Just know that like Malthy Buddha would later on go would later go on to make the biggest jq video ever it ended up getting him banned and he just completely fell off if i recall correctly but yeah he went full jq and put out a video about like jewish question shit oh shit pixie thank you for the raid i really appreciate that thank you well everybody who came from pixie you should come to my website that's where the chat's the most active i don't really uh look at twitch much but uh I appreciate that, thank you. That his other work means he's worth taking seriously. I think it would be funny and not to. Who's next? Do you have any idea how reputationally damning this is? <laughs> well, there's this guy who calls himself some black guy. His video's entitled, Bill Nye Ruins My Childhood. Oh dear, did the science man hurt your feelings? But I thought rational people put facts over feelings. <laughs> Bill Nye is now diving into the magical fantasy land of progressive identity politics, and he's doing it by uh, his show, uh, Bill Nye Saves the World, and I've only seen bits and pieces of it, and I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna watch it all the way through. Oh, great. Not only has he not actually seen the show, just the cherry-picked chunks that ended up on YouTube, he doesn't even plan on watching it. A lot of the, these for creators honesty, were like that. For most of the video, he plays clips from the scant bits he has seen and pauses them to cut away and try and make a clever riff. Standard cutaway commentary stuff. But it's actually a lot sexier than that. I don't know about you guys, but there's absolutely nothing sexy about this whatsoever. <laughs> Bill said it was sexy for a joke, and the audience laughed along because it was a joke. But Derek says it isn't very sexy at all. Oh my god, he's got him. He's owning him online with discourse. Can you feel the logic and reason yet? So and much then of it for the is rest just of the video, them not he getting jokes. about the horrifying state of the world now that some people identify as non-binary. And now you have a bunch of people that that just want to be heard. They want, they don't want to be normal. They want to, they want to live in this fantasy world where there's all these different options and shit. Oh no! People oh want God, to my, have options now. My wolf is playing it dangerous. <laughs> like you're starting to see on on websites where they have multiple options for gender where it was just always man or woman and now there's like oh fuck that no i'm no the non-binary or something else should be an option i'm like why it's not that fucking serious dude i mean i know to a lot of people it is but in in in, in, a, in, a, in the grand scale of things this is extremely trivial that this was literally the core of their arguments was like the left is trying to make you care about this stuff that doesn't matter why are they trying to make you care about it so much let's fight against them trying to make us care about this stuff so much they're trying to make us care who cares we shouldn't have to care about this it's so trivial why why are you trying to make us care we don't care i agree it is extremely trivial when someone comes up to me scream. and says i'd rather you refer to me by these pronouns from now on i say yeah all right because it's really not that hard, and it doesn't True. really affect my life all that much. Oh no, sorry, you meant the other kind of trivial. The kind where you spend days of your life recording YouTube videos complaining about it while insisting that it's trivial. Sure. That kind of trivial. Who better to talk about sex than two 
cis male white guys. <laughs> This dude is falling off the deep end. Why couldn't these people, why couldn't Bill Nye or anybody, any cis white man or just a, a cis male for, for talk about this type of stuff? Like, why is this even mentioned? Why would you say that? It, it, like, how Lack is that of even experience. funny? And my favorite part of this clip is that he realizes at the very end, asking these dumbass questions about why would you dare say that, that Bill was just making a joke. So he suddenly cuts himself off and goes, how is that even funny? Like, you can see the moment he realizes that maybe Bill Nye's sentence shouldn't be taken literally seriously, but he can't admit he fucked up, so he just cuts himself off and goes, Well, it wasn't funny either. And I wasn't <laughs> saying that cis male white And if it guys was a joke, it wasn't funny. Sex, because they are. They continue to do so after making the joke. I'm really surprised by how easily these folks are tripped by jokes. Now, I could just systematically True. own Derek for all the stupid shit he says over the course of the video, but I've set myself the lofty goal of cutting through the shaft and analyzing the core claims themselves that appear to be holding up the rest of the rants and seeing if at least they hold water. Yeah, we water. got comedy you know, all this bullshit here. is bullshit, but he might have a point in there somewhere. So I did some digging and found Derek's central claim, which is that Bill Nye has gone against the science, and he knows this is what's happened because real scientists used to say otherwise. But now he wants to play make-believe and say stuff like, oh, gender's on a spectrum, like sex, you know, there's there's such a thing as, like, non-binary and stuff like that, when, you know, before, like, any other science, uh, or scientist that has come before him has just said, there's two- This guy's entire, this guy's entire brand back then, I mean, particularly, you could probably tell by the fact that his username was is some black guy, this guy's entire brand was being an anti-SJW black man. Like, being- being a black man, but also being an anti-SJW. Which is supposed to be like a massive twist, I guess. And so that- that was the- that, that's like the- the- the brand that he did. And that ended up evolving into like the black conservative brand, like, you know, your Karen, Candace Owens and whatnot. Two genders, and they're determined by the chromosomes. Chromosomes? Whatever, he probably misspoke. Chromosome. He doesn't provide any data or studies to support the idea that gender is the determined The chromosome layer. But he also doesn't even dare say that himself. Instead he says, well, scientists say it. And he believes those scientists over Bill because, well, they say what he thinks is true. Certainly not because he's seen the evidence himself, because then he'd have bothered to show it to the viewer and not hide behind, scientists say it, wouldn't he? The funny thing is, Wolf, he no. tries and fails to claim that this nice. is what Bill used to say. This next clip is unintentionally amazing. Something that he said himself as well. In an act of utter hilarity, after saying this used to be what Bill said himself, he cuts to a scene from an old episode of Science Guy where someone who is definitely not Bill himself explains chromosomes. Before you're born, your mom gives you one of her chromosomes and your dad gives you one of his. Now, we're going to investigate that claim in a little more detail in a sec, but first, let's stop and think like video editors for a bit. Look, it's my one actual area of expertise. I was going to shoehorn this bit in somewhere. I'm going to be charitable here and assume that Derek did some research in advance. He probably at least watched some of the clips from the ice cream bit or the musical bit that people were spreading on YouTube and saw people claiming on Twitter that Nye used to say genders caused by chromosomes and then hit record assuming Bill had actually said it. Now, the question is, why would he think Bill had actually said it himself in the first place? He must have got a bunch this of other idea content from creators well, in his space. In the said spheres it. Derek runs in, a very popular image was circulating on Twitter with a picture of Bill holding up a diagram of chromosomes with subtitles claiming they decide a person's gender. These subtitles were fake. Nye said nothing of the sort in that actual. So one of the one thing that I love about conservative um, propaganda is that these people claim so strongly to care about truth and facts, while also like on their other monitor booting up Photoshop to create a fake screenshot to back up what they believe. Um, it's always been one of the most funny constants of conservative propaganda is, is, is you know, they, they'll constantly talk a big game about how much they care about truth, but, you know, they lie a lot blatantly segment. The image was spread by noted bastion of truth and ant enthusiast Ian Miles Chong in the hopes of convincing <laughs> gullible idiots. And, well, evidently it did. It appears that Derek here took it for granted that that was what Bill had said, and didn't even check it was true until after recording. So we had to use this clip of someone else saying something that you could twist to be about gender instead. Now, I'm just spitballing here. There's no way of proving that's the exact chain of events. Uh, Derek could have just missed the widely shared lie, 
tweeted by Chong, who he follows on Twitter, and which was originally tweeted just minutes before Derek tweeted, why is Bill Nye all over my feed? You know, it could uh. have been a different chain of events, but it wasn't. Now, I'm not saying Derek saw a fake screenshot and took it as fact without checking, and that this is antithetical to the very principles he claims Bill Nye has abandoned, but it certainly looks exactly like that. However, let's ignore this blatant ignorance and hypocrisy and talk a little about Most the segment he did right winger. Using, featuring someone who isn't Bill Nye talking about- For the record, by the way, like, none of these people, they, these people, like, fell apart whenever they got into debates. Like, if you have- I, I know that, like, Destiny is somebody that a lot of you guys won't like, but if you have not seen the OG, like, Destiny debates with these people, because he debated, like, pretty much the entire skeptic community, they fucking fell apart the second a lefty or a progressive, not even a lefty, just a progressive, with any, like, experience in discussing these topics. Like, they just fall apart. They're, they really were not ready for any level of pushback on their ideas. They were very used, very used to just being able to say whatever they wanted and get away with it. And when they started actually doing debates, it ended very poorly for these people about chromosomes. This clip is also widely used elsewhere to claim Nye's previous show was right, and then he got infected by feminism or something. Derek contrasts this old clip from 1996 with his present stance on the issue in his new show. Many months later. I used to think there were just two settings, male and female. At least you actually had a clip of Bill talking about the issue this time, Derek. The implication, of course, is that Nye has abandoned the science and become a liar, but this reflects a very poor understanding of the absolute basics of Bill Nye's old show and how it was constructed primarily to give children a baseline understanding of science in the 90s. The old show, I hate to point out, never really did cover sex, gender, or sexuality in much detail, was the most all. thorough. Covering these issues on a show for kids in the 90s was pretty much off limits. You'd come on- The hilarious thing was that this was all a bunch of adults reading about how this guy whose career was popularizing science with kids had, like, betrayed them. And how, like, Bill Nye is this, like, they held Bill Nye's show as the standard for, like, the best of learning about science. Like, there was nowhere better to go than Bill Nye before he became an SJW, I guess. Under fire for indoctrinating children into an evil agenda and other gay panic nonsense bullshit garbage. You know, the sort of thing similar neo-Puritans would do in the modern day if, let's say, there was a YouTube channel aimed at educating kids about these issues. I wonder why the producers wanted to avoid the ire of Derek's ideological predecessors and risk getting pulled from the air or sent death threats. They steered well clear and to my knowledge only ever barely broached the subject of sex differences when it's in relation to something else. The segment all the idiots are pointing to is from an episode about probability. No, not sex, not here's an episode on how chromosomes work, probability. Imagine for a moment that you're one of the writers of this show. Let's say you're writing an episode of a science show about probability, and you have 23 minutes to explain it to an audience, and an example you want to give is the probability of which sex you were born. And if dad gives you an X2, then you become a girl. But if he gives you his Y, then you become a boy. Even though, because you know your stuff, because you're a researcher for a show about science, the science behind transgender people is known to you, you're writing in an era where, generally speaking, the terms sex and gender are conflated in common parlance. And you're writing a show for kids, in fact you're writing lines for an actual kid to say, so you have her say, if you have a Y chromosome you're a boy, for convenience's sake. You also wrote a funny skit where Bill- Like, these people really thought they were doing something here, and they were! Like, these- these arguments were effective. People were like, yeah, Bill Nye's gone anti-science, bro. Yeah, Bill Nye's gone full SJW anti-science. Oh no! He's- he's using feelings and not facts, bro! No! Ah. <sighs> uh. All right, I'm gonna pull Hassan and go run for my vape really fast. It's plugged in over on the other side of my uh, my place, so I'm gonna go run and grab it. But you guys, you guys will survive without me. Bill picks the wrong door to his lab and falls off the roof of a building. Huh? Oh, oh, oh! oh boy! See, there are only two possibilities. 
you know, as a writer for the show, that there's a probability of a person being intersex or other rare chromosomal differences that complicate this simple 1 in 2 probability, but you know that taking the time to explain this here would mean cutting into the Wizard of Odds skit where you reenact the Wizard of Oz but with Bill Nye as the wizard. If you want to improve the chances of getting home safely, wear a seatbelt. The chance of becoming either a boy or a girl is always 1 in 2. A 50-50 chance either way. <clears throat> It's like flipping a coin. Mm -hmm. X, you're a girl, Y, you're a boy. You also, because you're not an idiot, have done more than five seconds of research and know that the probability in most industrialized nations of being born physically male is generally higher than being born physically female. So the chance- We know this because, well, there there's not even a close to equal amount. Well, is there actually like, at least in America, I think it's a little bit more women than men, but in some countries it's extremely weighed in one direction or the other, like, like 80% women to like 40% men, or to 20% men, especially after wars. Countries that have recently gone through war usually have a massive dis um, disparity in the population, though that's for reasons other than birth rate. <laughs> that doesn't have much to do with new people being born, less, much less than a different thing. Chances are more like 1.05 in 2, meaning it's not like flipping a coin so much as like flipping a coin that's very slightly weighted as a result of complex environmental factors. And there's also the rare but real possibility of the coin landing on its side. You don't bring this up either, because Bill really doesn't want to cut the skit where he counts dice possibilities next to the giant fan he stole from the set of Blade Runner. And since the video is boiling down probabilities for children, you leave it out, hoping people more discerning of the science will understand why you left it out, and privately you pray that none of the kids in the audience will grow up to call Bill Nye a liar when he explains the more complicated version to them as adults. <laughs> Does he cite any sources to back up his claims throughout the video? Why, some black guy gives an exhaustingly comprehensive list of his merch store, Patreon, PayPal, Second Channel, Twitch, Instagram, AskFM, Snapchat, Email, Grinder, Chimney, Splango, Etc. Etc. Unfortunately, he doesn't cite any sources because he doesn't have any well, to back up his beliefs. But he feels very strongly that he's right, and that's why, why you should it? check out the T-shirts for sale in his merch store. For example, this one about how. Okay, so I guess the the picture in picture bugged out. There we go. Um. Yeah. Okay. So these people just kind of skated by on the the fact that most people just kind of grow up under the un assailable impression that there are two genders you're born male or female guy or girl woman or man these are all synonymous boy or girl and uh, your sex and gender are the same thing they're determined by your chromosomes penis vagina that's what it is boobs or i guess flat chest guys have or pecs i don't know um like that that's as simple as it is for most people and so when somebody comes along and tries to complicate it which is how it's seen by these people, you know, like when a lefty comes along and tries to complicate it, it is way easier to just come along and say, actually, no, it's not that complicated. That person's crazy than to like, it's way easier to agree with that person who's saying that, oh, where did you come from? It's way easier to believe the, the new person who's come along to explain this new thing to you is telling you a bunch of bullshit. Um, then like, it's harder to believe that. Uh, or it's easier to believe that than to believe that something new is being taught to you and you should listen. Like, maybe some fundamental ideas you've always believed were true aren't actually as true as you thought, you know? How facts are more important than feelings. And he's right. In making an informed argument, facts are important. Would have been great if he'd had any, wouldn't it? Some black guy, more like some lack of evidence guy. Oh, cut that out. That's just... Rubbish. I like it. He did it. I hope you're sick of he bullshit because here's YouTube but no bullshit with his video entitled Bill Nye goes full Let's SJW, go! trashes whites, praises transgenders and gays, and by no bullshit, I apparently meant to say no sources. I bet we're in for a real science and research fest here. More like all bullshit.
about him. <laughs> I'm sick of people overinflating the amounts of gay and transgender people in the population. And I have nothing against the people. Don't get me wrong. I'm just sick of this overly gay, overly pro-trans narrative being pushed everywhere. Everywhere that toes the line with the liberal SJW PC crowd. It's gotten beyond annoying and is verging into unsettling and disturbing places. Can you imagine how insane this guy's videos would be today if he was still on YouTube? He quit a while ago, but if he came back, he'd probably be doing very well in today's political climate. Could you imagine how insane his talking points would be today? How stupid the things that would come out of his mouth would be? Oh my god. I'm too high for this right now. <laughs> Someone in chat is also stoned. I'm good. I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see I'm not the only one stoned out of my mind here. I'm glad to see my, my lovely little chatters are blazing it up with me. When I clicked a video by someone called No Bullshit, I thought I was entering an intellectual thunderdome. But so far all he's done is complain about the overly gay, overly pro-trans narrative that's being pushed everywhere by the liberals. I thought this was supposed to be about science, but this guy's just sharing his feelings about the liberals. What is this? No Bullshit's whole deal appears to be to pause during whatever he's watching partway through to fantasize about the deep, hidden emotions or the evil agendas of the people on screen. God, even the new theme song is shittier. And it just screams, I'm desperate to be cool and hip again. Here's a black guy singing my theme song. I'm down. What? Now either Mr. Bullshit, if that is his real name, which I'm going to assume it is, uh, can read minds or he's just written an elaborate fan fiction about Bill Nye wanting to look hip, so he personally gets Tyler the Creator to make the new theme. Because apparently no one else is involved with the production of a show. You know, the man the camera's These appointed people, at, he put- These people were criminally popular. You, you guys just, if you weren't there, you don't know. These people and their ideas were criminally popular. Personally writes it all, he commissions everything that goes into the show. Yeah, he J personally JXE destroyed no bullshit in a debate. It was really funny. I've seen that, yeah. What a, credit to uh to Mahler and that that gang, um, for for where credits due. They, along with JXE, were just in a like a Discord call with no bullshit bullying him for hours on end. Which was pretty cool to watch. But but yeah, credit where credit's due to, to maul around that one. They, 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 uh, they bullied the shit out of him. It was pretty fun to watch. Hires all the animators. You know, it's all Bill Nye. It's not like there's a production crew or anything. And who better to talk about sex than two cis male white guys? <laughs> Derek. And this is also where I lose all hope for this show. Anyone who uses the word cis is either an SJW whack job, or there's someone who is trying to pander to them. If you hear someone say a word you don't like, pause the video to complain about how that makes them the bad people. Bonus points if you then go on to make videos complaining about how everyone else is easily offended by words. They pull True. it off with so much confidence that it doesn't feel weird, it just feels like, hey. So now we jump to Veritasium on location in Korea. And to be honest, listening to this K-pop weirdo talk, I feel the same way Veritasium looks. He looks squinty. He's looking down on this creeper, raising his upper lip in disgust. He looks squinty, and that means he's looking down on the person he's interviewing. He secretly hates them. This Rachel Bloom bitch sounds like she's trying to be the next Amy Schumer or something. My vagina, God. my vagina. I'm telling you guys, they are they are upset. They hate they hate women making jokes about their vagina. But they, they these people, I guarantee you, these people joke about dicks, cocks, and fucking assholes all day. Okay, like straight dudes love making jokes about dicks, butts, balls, and being gay. All right, it's all we do all day. Don't don't listen to anybody who says otherwise. All straight cis men do all day is make gay like jokes about being gay, dicks and balls, okay? It's all we talk about, all right? Literally all we joke about. It's all of our humor. No one cares about your gross vagina, lady. I'm not going to even touch those frankly Freudian comments about <laughs> finding vaginas weird. Now as can be plainly seen, this no bullshit fellow doesn't really have any understanding of the science and isn't all that bright otherwise, so he doesn't even really understand why he's so angry that the show Out is vagina. too pro-gay. So he wallpapers over the cracks in his own understanding by imagining that everyone on screen is sad and angry and hateful and wants to look cool and is pushing an agenda and is an evil liberal and wants to be like Amy Schumer. 
which doesn't really make any sense. No one wants to be like Amy Schumer. Not even True. Amy Schumer wants to be like Amy Schumer. <laughs> now, if I really Got wanted her. to, I could go through the entire video and make one of my patented citation needed jokes. One of the things that really, like, early on, I, I guess was one of the steps I, I took sort of into this sphere was the Amy Schumer hate. Um, like, seeing the videos that are, like, just comparisons to her stealing a joke from another... Like, it'll be a joke from her, and then a joke from a comedian that's more popular than her, like, years before. And it's, like, almost word for word, but a couple words changed. Like, she's a serial joke thief and just slightly changes some of the words to make it sound like her own. Um, watching those compilations of Amy Schumer stealing jokes was one of the... One of the things I did a lot when I was a, a little chuddy lad. Every single time he makes a claim and then doesn't support it with any evidence whatsoever. This still doesn't change the fact that there are only two genders. True. That's a meme right there. But instead, That's where it came from? This is the video that the H-Bomber guy citation needed image comes from? It came from this video, huh? That's so cool. I didn't even know that was that it was from this video. That's so neat. Really quick, Trent, I'm gonna explain this uh, this science to you really quick, okay? We've got some science going on here. This is a generator. I put fuel in here, it puts out power. This is a macerator. It breaks down ore into dust. This is an electric furnace. It very quickly smelts things. And this is a compressor. You'll see what the compressor does soon. Decided to take a leaf out of his book and just imagine that he likes the smell of his own farts and then move on without thinking about him too much. Ugh, we're running out of people pretending they have compelling arguments. Quick, what about previous appearance have a red pill philosophy? The guy who couldn't even mm. remember the names of the main characters of The Force Awakens in the car after getting out of the theater. Maybe his video, Bill Nye's Netflix show trashes white people, glorifies trans... Wait, haven't we seen that title before? <laughs> so it's like a game. Something you have to know as well is that when some, l like, I guess SJW Netflix show came out or something like that, all of these people collectively made their videos making the exact same arguments. There was not a single bit of variation between their arguments. It was all the same video, copy-pasted over and over again. It was just a different mouthpiece to choose from is what channel you would pick to hear your your you know the same take on a story from just a different mouthpiece a whole you know catalog of mouthpieces to choose from oh Rouge v yeah the rapist guy you guys Proto are the same thing i love that clip it's from Rouge complaining to some journalists accusing them of secretly plotting to push a unified narrative by writing similar articles as if there's a multitude of ways of reporting about his legalized rape article but i like reusing it in a better context of people in his sphere copying each other's work i can't wait for them to start suing each other those court cases are going to be hilarious but speaking of doing the same thing at this point i'm starting to see a lot of repeat performances trotting out the same arguments again and again in new, even more uninformed incarnations. We've got the lecturing the white race argument. Yeah, I mean, like, you can say that, like, like Andrew Tate's pretty crazy and all. Like, he's pretty extreme, you know, like, pretty overt, like, with all the insane shit he believes, but, like, to be fair, Roosh V back in the day was straight up writing articles about why rape should be legalized, because it's, like, the natural inclination of men to rape in the natural uh, place of women to receive it. You know, it's, it, like, these ideas are what Andrew Tate believes, and his, I, like, his fans do believe these things, but, like, I, I don't think he's necessarily ever outright said that, like, rape is good, and that women are made for rape. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you're... You're able to one-shot me. You're very much able to one-shot me right now. Nice. Battery. Okay, we're gonna have to use wood for now um, to power our machines because we've got no extra coal. I did say we needed a lot of spare coal. Argument. Some Indian dude came on to Bill Nye's show to lecture white people about cultural appropriation. Prashant's lectured the entire white race on how it's unacceptable to use Asian mysticism because it's from a different culture. You've got complaints that it's too political to even talk about this stuff.
What becomes very obvious quickly is that none of these people actually watched the show. They all just watched each other's complaining about the show, which all the arguments originated from was like Twitter threads live tweeting about it from people who ambiguously may have watched the show. That 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 was that was literally the level of of bullshit that was going on in the sphere of YouTube back then. For even outright fantasies of a secret liberal agenda, pushing leftist liberal SJW narratives. This episode is very clearly politically driven. Oh, it's 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 politics, like bringing the politics into the science. And we've got the same sob uh. stories about how he used to like Bill, but then he betrayed me. Bill Nye is a childhood hero to a lot of people, including myself. His television show, Bill Nye the Science Guy, was informative, innovative, and entertaining. I was extremely excited when Netflix announced that they'd be releasing a brand new Bill Nye series. You used to be a voice for hard science. When I was a child, you were just this cool figure for science. You are a representative of science, and you just shit over all of it. And of course, we've got the fantastic repeat performance of not bothering to cite any sources or studies to back up any of their claims. Why At science man believe in science? Blur. I can't honestly tell you what Red Pill Philosophy said in his video, and the first time I watched it, I wasn't sure if I'd somehow seen it before and forgotten. I tried to rewatch it and see if he says anything worth specifically debunking, but my eyes just slide off him and I start to think about all the vacuuming I could be doing. Bill Nye, the establishment guy, <laughs> is nothing but an establishment shill, nothing but establishment propaganda. If you go to the Twitter page of that- As I've said many times, these people lived and died by the idea that their content was this, like, rebellious, anti-establishment media uh, re rebellion that was building up in to fight against the mainstream media establishment narratives that were brain-poisoning everyone. That was, th that was what they lived and died by. March for Science uh, Twitter page, that establishment propaganda. Bill Nye the propaganda guy. Bill Nye the establishment guy. Um... So Bill and I the propaganda guy, Bill and I the establishment shill guy. At this point in my quest, I was desperate for someone, anyone, who had something different to say. It didn't even have to be right. At this point, a different set of wrong arguments would have been enough to make me feel alive again. And then, out of the darkness, I've been there. I've been there. Rage After Storm. Rage After Storm is one uh, of the... This YouTuber played such a massive part in destroying the skeptic community. She started off as this very, you know, pretty lady, you know, very easily blew up, in, well-spoken to, blew up in the, in the, uh, uh, the, like, right-wing sort of, like, skeptic sphere very quickly. And everybody was friends with her. Everybody was defending her whenever there was drama. Everybody staked their reputation, their name, and their word on this lady and then she made a video on race realism she made a video on race realism and it all came crashing down she came out as a race realist and all those people who defended her it like people some people defended her some people didn't it tore friendships apart podcasts fell apart it was when the schism between the like liberal skeptics like shoe on head armored skeptic tj um thun like thunderfoot it's when those people splintered off from the sargons and the nick fuentes's and people like rage after storm and andy worski it was when the big schism happened who's youtuber this who lady actively courts a far right audience and likes to talk about how race is real and tweet about how hitler had some really good ideas this video is entitled bill nye the jewish guy Please stop okay. getting triggered over the Jew thing. It's a reference to the nose. It was just banter. Oh, ContraPoints is, is voicing here. Co that's ContraPoints, I can tell. The video opens a little familiarly to begin with, with the standard totally not fabricated Bill Nye sob story. I loved him and it made me want to think about stuff, but then he said the bad thing. Look, I know that so many people are starting to catch this SJW virus, but I never knew- how- does that sound familiar, by the way, guys? The SJW virus? Where have you heard something similar to that before, lately? Woke mind virus. 
That is the right, one of the right's most popular, like, buzzwords right now is woke mind virus. How different is that from the SJW virus, as they called it back in the day? It's the same thing. Woke and SJW are the same words. PC, all the same shit. I knew that it would be my dearest Bill. I respected him so much. No, no really, he was... He was my muse. But then she goes off the fucking chain! She one-ups Armored Skeptic's ice cream slut-shaming, and begins trying to figure out which sexualities the ice creams represent in the comedy ice cream cartoon. You have vanilla that's straight. One of the flavors then has to be a lesbian. One of them has to be gay. One of them has to be bisexual. Okay, someone over here is a fucked up ice cream. She's trying to fucking diagnose cartoon ice creams. Wh which sexuality are you? Let me get out my ice cream speculum. Jesus. Sorry I'm late. I was busy being two awesome things at once. Okay, nope, chocolate True. chip is obviously bisexual. True. Shut shut the fuck up, lady. Shut the fuck up with your dumbass take you're about to say. True. As I mentioned literally earlier in the stream, mint chocolate chip is in fact exactly what it was described as there. That was good writing. Yeah, seeing these conservatives mad about ice cream is fun. This is weird. Actually, chocolate chip is pretty straightforwardly a metaphor for non-binary or intersex people. You know, being two awesome things at once. Not enjoys licking <gasps> two <gasps> different kinds of ice cream at once. We gotta kill <laughs> it. Can't That's the only way. The is to kill it. We have to kill it. Segment. Can, can we, we got not encourage gangbangs, please? Can we teach people uh, a bit of decency? Compressor. Having a gangbang is not something to be proud of. <laughs> the ogre broke the compressor. What made it attack? I think it was the wolf, maybe? The wolf being sat outside might have made it attack? Ah. Maybe they just attack, no matter what. This is why I love this mod pack, is you actually have to defend yourself. Like, you can't just hole up in your house and think you'll be safe. Something's coming for you. Something's coming for that bussy. Whether you like it or not, something is. Well, someone isn't invited to my next house party, I can tell you. Not because of that, though, because of the Hitler apologetics. Again, this is exactly how STDs spread. Being slutty is not cool. No, being uneducated about STDs and how they spread is how they spread. True. Imagine that. The real problem being people being uneducated no, on the issue. Abstinence only, Imagine abstinence if that was only. the real problem here. So she continues to moral panic about how the show is promoting being bi as cool too much and how it's tricking people into wanting to be bi to be trendy. You know, because that's how sexuality works. Just in general, why are we advertising the fact Dude. that bisexuality is- It's always so sus to me when these people say that sexuality is a choice, or they implicitly talk about sexuality, gay people, whatever it may be, like it's a choice. Because- I assure you it's not. I can't make myself look at a dude and be down for that. I just, I can't. It's not possible. In no universe could I, is it, is it doable? The same goes for a gay person, like a gay dude and a woman. They just, they, it doesn't, it doesn't fly for them. They can't see, it just doesn't work. They can't make that, that happen. It's an unpleasant thought for them even, right? You can't change your sexuality like, if your sexuality is a certain thing, the idea, unless you, you have, like, a, a more fluid sexuality, which is basically just pansexuality, um, like, it's not a thing that you change. Like, or, like, it's not a thing that's, like, a choice. Your sexuality. We're talking about sexuality, not gender here, by the way. Like, you can't, no one's choosing to be gay. No straight people out there are, like, waking up and deciding they want to get some dick. Uh, like a straight guy is not waking up and deciding he wants to try dick. I, it's just not common. I'm not even going to say it's not common. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> like, when these people talk about sexuality being a choice, it's sus because it makes me think, if you think sexuality is a choice, that tells me that you feel like it's a choice, which tells me you feel like you could totally go and go out and eat some pussy right now, Rage After Storm. Like you, you, Like, if you weren't deciding not to do that, like, fighting an urge to do it, you would. Like, you have that urge, is what you're telling me right now. That's what it tells me. I don't know. It's cool. This isn't a particularly uncommon approach to sexuality either. You see it everywhere in conservative criticism of progressive media. 
Like with no bullshit, the problem isn't that LGBT people exist, of course not, they love gay people. The problem is the overly pro-LGBT narrative. From their perspective, Just the issue is words. people being too nice about the bees, the gyars, the lesbs, and the transes, and that throws off the delicate balance of nature or something. You know, they mm -hmm. think these people are allowed to exist, and that's fine, that's okay, we've finally gotten them that far. Uh, but they have to exist in the background somewhere. You can't accidentally make it look like it's okay to be like that because that's basically just pushing their agenda on people. None of it is meant to be like a fashion craze or a trend or something that's cool, okay? It's not. This provides people with pressure. Pressuring people into becoming bi and having orgies? Is that really what the cartoon ice cream skit does? They to feel the pressure. This might they just do. be my opinion, but I don't think many people are going to have their Conservatives feel pressure. changed or their identity Bird. radically altered by media presenting it as okay to not that be straight or not be. I'm going to say the bad word. Cover your ears. Cisgendered. I'm at the risk of sounding a little bit stubborn here, but I just don't accept that people who are secure in their own sexuality are going to have theirs changed by other people being open about their own. Which is why my conscience will be clear when, at the end of this sentence, I cut to a graphic depiction of what I get up to in my bed every single night. Whoa. I'm playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Of course he is. You can play it anywhere, because it's portable. It's a, it's a really good game, guys. But don't get me wrong. If only he could have known that the Steam Deck is only was only years away. Yeah, apparently the Steam Deck is really good, like, and, and you can use it as, like, a computer, almost like a laptop. So, oh, I made the wrong tool. Like, almost like a computer, like a laptop or something. Is it worth getting at some point down the road for when I travel? I wouldn't necessarily use it that much for gaming so much as I would use it for just, like, computer stuff, like watching videos and checking my channel and having something that's less phone-like. There's a long wait list for them, too, apparently. That doesn't mean that there aren't very positive effects of having good representations of LGBT people in media. This kind of goes without saying, but generally speaking, it's healthy for a person to feel like they're allowed to express themselves and their True. identity without fear of not being accepted or of being treated like they're lesser as a result of it. Perceiving positive representations of LGBT people as some kind of insidious trick is, academically speaking, very stupid. Versatile love may have some butt stuff. Ew. I think that short clip of someone saying <laughs> butt stuff and cutting to her saying ew sums up her coverage of most of this episode. She seems to be aware of how little she has to say ew. though, so she quickly moves on to the episode dealing with overpopulation and carbon footprint and what to do about it. Someone on the panel talks about the much lower carbon footprint of people in a non-Western country, and we get this well, just watch. Uh oh. How many does the average American make? I did that with my coffee this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 16 <laughs> metric tons wow. is so what the average is. 160 times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so our two kids are way more problematic. The Nigerians with uh, an average seven children are not the problem when it comes to climate change. The reason why they have so many fucking kids is not because they care about what's happening with the environment. I'm pretty sure Botswana what? over in Africa is not popping out kids <laughs> and things. I love how they hear different, like, they, they hear something different than what was actually said every time. King, it's okay. I can have this seventh kid. It's sustainable. It's okay. I'm, I'm not using all this CO2. I'm not creating greenhouse gases. No, they have kids to fuel selfish ways of getting them to look after them when they're older. They have kids because they know that child that they're popping out right now will probably die from famine, diseases, or both. Contraception for them is out of the window anyway. I mean, they don't even know how to put on a fucking condom. I mean, can we really trust these people <laughs> to take a contraception? Wait, you're in favor of making sure American kids don't know how to put on a condom. Also, I'm pretty sure they could put on a condom considering it's like really straightforward. Like I feel like if I if if I it, like it's very obvious what it's for, you know? Like like I, I you know, I don't know. That was pretty racist, yeah. Receptive pull every day. 
Can we really? The answer is no. This video took a fucking turn. She takes the comment about the lower carbon footprint of people in Western Africa and just goes off on a rant about how stupid and bad those people are, how they can't be trusted to put on a condom. She yeah, doesn't even appear to notice iPhone. that the image she's using to stereotype an entire continent of people is literally taken from the website nationalstereotype.com. So should we have policies that These people, you just, it, it was, it was a different time. It was a similar time, but it was still a different time. You know what I'm saying? We're back in it again. Penalize people for having extra kids in it's the developed different. world. Um, so I do think that we should at least consider it. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. So let's get people in Western countries to stop- I'll let this unhinged rant continue, but let's just pause for a second and keep in mind that what the guy actually said was, I think we should at least consider it. Remember that she's this angry about a very non-committal comment about how we should maybe at least think about it. Remember that she's angry here about the idea of thinking about something get people in western countries to stop having Most kids, you know, the people that are actually solving the problems with climate change, so then people in the third world can overpopulate us. <gasps> That's right, Rage okay. After Storm's talking about the Great Replacement, the easily yeah, debunkable idea that foreigners are going to take over the West by outbreeding us because of differences in birth rates. They were importing these third worlders into Western countries like Germany, where the population is aging and on a decline. They're importing foreigners and they're going to take over. She even uses the phrase replacement rate. If you'd like to know more about this idea and why it's total bullshit, actual skepticism user and skull recall. Listen, if the Great Replacement means I don't have to marry a white woman, then I'm all for it, okay? Claimer, Sean and Jun did a video debunking it handily. So handily that it got false flagged and taken down for a while by idiots because its existence was inconvenient for them. Check it out. Rage's version of the Great Replacement is even less informed and even more overtly racist than it normally is. And by saying to the residents of the Third World, Oh yeah, no, you, you keep on having kids. You are basically shooting yourself in the foot. When I'm out and about but, and I see people with loads of kids, it's either people that look like they dance around wind turbines with hemp sandals on, or people who aren't really Western Europeans. She concludes that the solution is education. And I guarantee you, the way to solve this issue is by education. I agree. Some people could like certainly ed? do with knowing a bit more Where's about the issues before they open their mouth to dog whistle about being replaced by immigrants. Mwah, mwah. Now, some people who are watching this video might genuinely think the Great Replacement is real or otherwise nod along with similar scaremongering about immigrants. And I bet those people feel hard done by right now. I can imagine that Free Speech Fan 1488 has already paused the video to go, Oh, you didn't actually debunk the Great Replacement. You just made fun of how completely fucking unhinged it sounds. You know, I, um... Let me tell you guys this, a story about a commenter I had on my channel uh, the other day. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. It's related to this point that, that H Bomber guy just made. So, I put out a video about how conservatives consider cruelty against minorities and people on the left as a virtuous, heroic act that, like, you should go out of your way to do. It's why, you like, no matter what you're doing, if you're, like, a trans person or just a progressive person in general, like, it, you could, like, stub your toe on your dresser and tweet about it, and then some conservative will be like, that's what you get for being a groomer, like, freak. You know, like, some piece of shit will come out of the woodwork to comment something snarky because they just they they just like causing like misfortune for anyone who's on the left and even if it do, it's just something that leaves you saying huh that was pretty cringe what, what did he thought did he think he did something there like what, what was that like even if that's all it was and that's all that came of it you would still um like, they still think they got you, you know? And that's what the the whole point of it is. It's for them to feel like they got you. Okay, let me dig this out a little bit. She cited a, a newspaper article. And so basically... Sorry, I forgot I was telling a story. I'm stoned. So basically what ends up happening is I put out that video 
and it's about how uh, the right is super in favor of uh, uh, hatred and cruelty and malice towards the left. And this guy comments, this guy who's clearly a conservative comments, you're cherry picking. The right is not all about cruelty. Most conservatives are just doing their own thing. Yeah, and just making like a bunch of like, you know, predictable arguments about how the right isn't actually cruel and it's the left who's cruel. And then nine hours later, nine hours later on a different video, somebody comments first on the video and that same guy replies to that random person who commented first on my on that new video on a completely different topic saying yeah first on a dog shit baby streamers video laughing crying emoji <laughs> literally 9 hours later not only were they the, like one of the first people to comment on my video but they replied to an unrelated comment on an unrelated video proving the point i made in the video they left their first comment arguing against there's something else, man. Article to prove that she's right. Uh, why didn't you not bother even a to day debunk later, that? Nine You're hours ignoring later. it. You're afraid of the truth. Well, hold your horses, mate. Let's look at that newspaper article in more detail. Shall we? Luckily, to her credit, Rage After Storm, in the interest of transparency, has put a link to all of the sources that she used in the description of the video, including links to where she got the Bill Nye clips from, a bunch of newspaper articles calling Bill Nye a full of shit baby man who said the bad things from places like The Federalist? Not a publication I had heard of, but that's alright. Let's just click the link to that source in the description and- Oh, Nazi. Oh. Weird. That link isn't in the description. I wonder why. Instead, I had to find it myself by googling the title. Oh boy, it's an article from The Telegraph. That bastion of accurate political reporting, entitled, Nine in ten babies born in parts of Britain have a foreign parent. That's the title. Do yourself a favor and keep in mind for a second the phrases, nine in ten and parts of Britain. Now, let's read the first paragraph. How narrow Almost are those parts of Britain? nine in ten babies born in parts of Britain have like a neighborhood? one foreign-born parent, official figures have revealed for the first time. Almost nine in ten. Well, we've already stepped back one from the headline. Almost nine in ten is not nine in ten. At least parts of Britain hasn't changed. Oh well, maybe it's some big parts. That's still a lot of people with foreign-born parents, even if it was eight in ten. How about we read the second paragraph? The God, Office for National great. Statistics disclosed that in 2012, more than 80% of babies born in three London boroughs had either one or both parents born outside the UK. Oh, some more backpedaling. Almost 9 in 10 is actually more than 80%, which they refuse to pin down with the actual percentage. I wonder why. Well, actually, I know why. It's because the number wasn't convenient enough. And these foreign-born parents' children are being born at this proportion Wait, 80 in three London boroughs. Just, just for those of you who don't know, London has 32 boroughs. The Telegraph found a very small part of Britain with a high relative birth rate among foreign-born parents and fudged the numbers enough to get an attention-grabbing headline to make it look like we're being swarmed by immigrant babies. This is every one. The rare times where you may stumble across a, like, high-level conservative, we'll say, that actually has some cherry-picked data to bring to the table, it will always be something like this. If it, like, the reason why they bring it up always in a live, like, format and just kind of throw it at you is because you can't fact-check it on the fly because you're in the middle of a discussion. But if you had the time to, you would very easily be able to find out why there's something wrong with it. It's always something like this. It's always, oh, actually, the study, when you look at it, this, this, and that. Or even, like, the author itself has come out to speak against the claims the right has made using the study. It's always something like that. It's always something that, like, destroys the entire argument that they really rely on you not already knowing when they throw it at you. What they actually did was draw a very small circle around a part of the country where a lot more immigrants live than the native-born population. The That's figures what I were assume. published amid concerns that hundreds of thousands of migrants from Romania and Bulgaria could come to Britain when restrictions are lifted in the new year. W wait, those aren't the places Rage was talking about. 
Rage was talking about people from Africa, and The Great Replacement's all about diagrams of maps full of little black people overwhelming little white people, and <coughs> websites pushing it tell lies about native women being encouraged to procreate with African men. This Telegraph article is scaremongering about very different groups from the current targets, who tend to Nazi be from propaganda more brown, so weird, dude. Muslim-y countries. That's because Rage is citing an article from 2013, back when the immigration restrictions were set to be lifted, and many totally smart people feared we'd be flooded so heavily with Romanians and Bulgarians that the country would literally collapse back into the ocean from the added weight, yeah, which, as we all know, Romanians. literally happened. Just kidding. This reasonable, rational thinker who thinks they've outscienced Bill Nye tried to scaremonger about immigration from the wrong place than the one they're talking about by citing the headline of a three-year-old article that all but admits it's completely misrepresenting the actual data a few paragraphs in. Hey look, I think we figured out why she didn't bother linking it in the description. Also note that when she does show the text of the article, it's blurred, so you can't pause it and check to see how heavily distorted That's what Blair the White article did, is being with, with cutting off that one Canadian Weird how she Cancer needs Society to article. Do that. Almost as if she knows the source is full of shit, but <sighs> didn't think anyone would bother to check. Now, if you're anything like me, and they love I doing that. hope not, you're probably wondering but why, then someone of all does the articles check. to cite about like immigration me. and overpopulation, why guy. she would pick such an old one, scaremongering about immigration from a different place. Like, why of all things would this article or its data form the basis for her claims? Let's assume that you're gullible and you've been tricked into believing the lie that foreigners are coming to outbreed you, and you're so sure it's right that you don't feel the need to do any research, but you know you need to look like you did to seem credible, so you need a news story to flash up that looks like it supports to you. How would you find an article that suits your needs? Well, if it was me, I would Google something ridiculous like too many foreign babies and pick the one with the most attention-getting headline that also <laughs> looks like it did some actual statistical analysis. You know, like maybe the fourth That's one they down. That's they do. Even. This attitude to science, they do. studies, information, they love and doing that. facts is probably one of the many reasons why Rage and others found Nye's recent work so bad. Anything they it try to use as a source for what they believe falls apart with so have already scrutiny. decided what the truth is about issues of gender or immigration or global warming. Speaking of denying the science of climate change, I made a joke about Steven Crowder in the last video and a bunch of people went, ooh, is he gonna do Crowder next? And I hate to disappoint my... fan. So let's take a look at some of Stevie's work about Nye's recent work. Oh boy. That's an awful thing take that. Let's have a look at some We're of Stevie's We're gonna have to deal with some comedy chat, some Nye's conservative comedy. I did it again. I've saved myself the job of really having to go through his claims about the gender uh, episode, geez. because I've covered all the main ones already, and as we've already covered, I hate these Stephen people Crowder have a so habit much, of repeating chat. each other's points. I can't he was, handle he was, conservative making the comedy. case that gender exists on a spectrum. By the way, very different, if you go back to his old show, he did say that chromosomes determine gender. If you go back to the episodes when we were a kid. So he's done a 180 on that. So instead I'll point out that his real beef with Nye comes from how Bill's vocal about climate change and doing something about it, and Crowder is sure that the science doesn't support man-made climate change, and he has some counter-arguments that he's sure are good. And then you have evidence, and the evidence disagrees with your worldview, so you deny the evidence, and then along right. with True. that, you deny the authorities that are providing the evidence. You will not destroyed. deny the authorities. <laughs> now we're going to be talking- Eee! A talk in a German voice authoritarian joke. Why that's almost as good as knowing the science! Uh, who wants to take a bet with me that at some point he's recently made a video accusing the left of calling everyone Nazis and how unproductive that is? Just kidding. I've seen more than one of his videos, so I know he does that. The left has been Constantly. so busy calling everyone Nazis. Who would dare invoke needless comparison to the Nazis? What sort of imbecile would dare do something like that? Ah, no, he's just talking authoritatively in a German voice. That's not necessarily invoking comparison to the Nazis for political points. Completely unrelatedly, just you know, nothing to do with the last sentence. Here's a segment from a video that he did about Nye on climate change. Now, everybody, science is political. <laughs> science is political. Yep. Incorrect. First, let me draw your attention to the definition of science. They want so... The they had so... They had to. They had to, like, cling. They had to cling to this narrative that politics was bad and they were anti-politics. It was it was a desperation to be not political. That the left makes everything political and you have to fight against it. They were desperate to push this idea. They clung to it. Intellectual and practic 
practical You'll hear activity. it over and oh over and God. over again in these videos. I forgot that he watching. actually cites the dictionary definition of science to try and avoid accepting the basic fact that, like, in order to stop the world from melting down, scientists might have to try and influence policy. Wait, 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 no, this gets worse, doesn't it? M merging politics and science, not allowing them to exist uh, autonomously of each other, can only serve to alter science's trajectory to the path of truth. Okay, that, that, that's the main purpose here, and Bill Nye wants that specifically. Some examples? I know it seems tired and old hat, but let's go to Nazi Germany. That's kind of a prime example of political science. It also, of course, led to uh. guessing a few individuals. You heard me right. If scientists try to make the government listen to the effects of global warming and do something about it, it's the same as the Holocaust. With Steven Crowder, it's honestly a laugh a minute, watching him flip-flop between comparing hey, everyone he doesn't like to the Nazis and their genocides, and complaining that way too many people are comparing things to the Nazis nowadays, especially those leftists, who are the Ooh. only ones that do it. But where are the other scientists speaking up? Kind of like w with Islam. Where are, you know, we say, where are the Muslims speaking up w against the acts of terrorism? Not only against terrorism. <laughs> it's how in the same video, every Muslim goes must from speak out against how Muslim, dangerous like, political Islamic science terrorism, was I to guess. the Jews. He then, for seemingly no reason, decides to start spreading the, like, legit lie that Muslims don't condemn terror attacks. You know, I expected this video to contain lies about Bill Nye and the science. I did not expect it to contain lies about Muslims. I guess when you only have two talking points, you got to find a way to fit them in somehow, right? Crowder you know, has Steve, to be racist no matter the topic. There are many gigantic lists out there of Muslims and Muslim groups that have come out against so-called Islamic terror. But I can't think of a single Muslim who's condemned global warming. Coincidence? Where are the Muslims speaking up against the acts of terrorism? <laughs> It's very weird how he has to keep quibbling about nonsense instead of easily debunking the data he says can be easily debunked. And when he really does get around to now trying they just to claim actually the data debunk Jewish. climate science, when he's or not saying people the wanting left. to do something about it are Nazis, they he's doing like such a poor job of debunking it that you don't even need me to show you the flaws in his understanding. Even racists can accept climate change is a problem that begs a solution. Problem when it comes to climate change. Yes, I agree that climate change is an actual problem and it needs to be sorted out and we do need to sort out the consummation of electricity and I'm honestly really quite stunned Even the that in the middle of the right video complaining about the bisexual agenda spreading racist not all Nazis lies, are anti scaremonger like, that's one that'll surprise you is not all Nazis are necessarily like a surprising amount of Nazis are also eco fascists or not eco fascists necessarily but like they're fascists but they still care about the environment to some extent and, and like, they, they want the environment preserved for white people only. Like, that kind of thing, if that makes sense. It's complicated. Fascism itself is supposed to not make sense. So it does it just doesn't make sense. Angering about immigration and whose description has to defend the fact that she says Bill Nye has a Jewish nose. Lady Stormfront okay. still manages to have a better stance on climate change than Steven Crowder. That's the... Was Stormfront from the boys show meant to be Rage After Storm? Was that the inspiration? Because so many of the conservative like pundits in the boys are inspired by real conservative pundits, both in like on TV and online. They look so similar too. I know Stormfront's a Nazi website. I don't, but it just kind of connected to me, like the. Eric Kripke could probably wa probably would watch Philosophy Tube, and that might have been a joke that just stuck with him. And, and when he decided to to make s season two of The Boys, I bet Eric Kripke watches H Bomber Guy. That would absolutely. She's not British on the show. That's true. I don't know. I'm stoned as fuck. My brain's drawn connections where they don't exist. I'm about to start talking about how it's crazy that like, bro, isn't it crazy that like. Grasses everywhere, man. Like you just walk on it, and and that that's just supposed to be okay. But if you were to step on a tree, everyone would be like, "You're, you're an asshole, man." I, that's me if I get too high, okay? The lowest bar I've ever seen, and Crowdy Wowdy has just tripped over it and fallen into a well. 
And it's not just rage that puts Crowder to shame. If you want to see his claims get debunked in more detail, there are many good videos out there by the uh, seminal and personally inspirational Potholer54 and... <gasps> Armoured Skeptic? Whoa. He's back. Oh, that's right. We just came full circle. Out of the Antarctic ice came? sheet showed a net gain of 112 billion tons of ice per year. But you didn't mention that there's also a net loss for the entire planet. Greenland also has oh, a major shit, ice base. sheet. The total net ice loss for Greenland is an average. As much shit as I give Armored Skeptic, based on like who he is today and everything, I think that like it's probably more likely that the things that come off as dishonest in his content were stupidity or like ignorance and laziness rather than um, active malicious hate. Like he holds some pretty clear progressive values and it's his, his political place is pretty bizarre. He might just be a grifter. It's hard to say, at least for me. I, he's a hard one to read for me. And I think I'm pretty good at reading these types, but for him, I, I think he might be sincere. Just kind of 269 dumb. billion tons of ice every year. So the planet suffers a net loss of 147 billion tons of God, ice. God, this data every makes me year. scared you every see, time I hear Skeptic it. Skeptic was wrong about most of the issues. It's getting he worse up every second. Show because he doesn't really have a grasp of the related science. But he's right enough about climate science to know Crowder's full of shit. The truly interesting thing about Skeptic and those like him is that if you pay attention, you can quite easily discern the places where they've actually decided to employ reason and skepticism and yep. proper fact-checking, and the places where a sort of the party line has is taken formed them. of the same arguments repeating themselves over and over, yep. but no one's really thought about the issue in that much detail. For these people, ignoring the latter and the parts where they just kind of complain about the SJWs, the former can actually be quite informative and interesting. Not always, but quite often. This schism is interesting, and the solution isn't all that hard. It actually just means employing reason and skepticism, but even more about even more things. It would be nice if he acknowledged the existence of my video criticizing him, or even tried to respond he wouldn't at do all that. to the These points. People, in they're it. scared. But I know These how long this scared. kind of thing can take. You've got to pick what you cover with your keep time their, very carefully, their or persona nothing gets intact. done. And I certainly can't criticize anyone for doing what they think is right with the time they have. For example, I've spent nearly two months of my life reading data and biology books and studies about trans people and reading about the lived experiences of being trans in order to come to a better understanding before broaching this topic and responding to criticism, before realizing that most of the criticism didn't do any research and there was really no reason for me to do most of that reading. Uh, and uh, I've had basically no that's life. chances to show all the work I did in this video, and I'm thoroughly disappointed in myself. I accidentally took the time to educate myself to no benefit other than my own personal expansion of knowledge, like some kind of loser who thinks that's important. The chuds were so and much dumber back that, then. Just to respond to videos, they're dumb. They're just as dumb now. It's just their arguments were, really good at were covering dumber. The issues anyway. Back I want to then. close by focusing on a section of that episode they haven't that smarter, a lot of people complained more about, probably because it rightfully made them feel uncomfortable, because it made me feel a bit uncomfortable too. So I'm going to ask for a little help with that, and who better to talk about sex than two cis male white guys? <laughs> it sat with me because I really can't avoid what it's pointing out. I can talk all day about whatever the right way to discuss or present these issues might be, but at the end of that day, I will still be an outsider to those issues. I was deeply curious what the opinion of someone who's actually affected by these issues might be about the show, so I reached out to trans YouTuber Zinnia Jones for her perspective on the issues, and she hmm. sent me this. Let's watch. I think she's still doing content around. Hi. I'm Zinnia Jones. I think I'm she's a trans around woman, still. and I've been covering transgender issues on YouTube been a while. for several years. This is an old video. Personally, I enjoyed Bill Nye's presentation of the spectrum of gender and sexuality. As a trans person, I've often found coverage of these topics for a cisgender audience to be oversimplified or awkward. But this episode was surprisingly painless, and even charming, and it offered a nuanced explanation of human diversity that's sadly lacking in most media. I was glad to see such a high-profile presentation of concepts that I and other trans advocates have been raising awareness of for years. 
such as the decoupling of gender from sex and the recognition of non-binary genders. The use of gender expression in South Korea's culture was a great concrete example of how our ideas about gender can be actively shaped by societal influences. And I True. felt that the ice cream that is a good example, was actually. pretty effective in connecting Other cultures sexuality have to something much that people less can rigid viscerally standards. understand in their lives. Being told that your favorite flavor of ice cream is wrong would make no sense. And as they depicted, the people who feel the need to try and rewrite their sexual orientation do tend to end up in some very queer situations. As someone who loved watching Bill Nye as a kid, I'll admit it was a bit strange to hear a song about hand jobs and power bottoms. But on the whole, I think this episode is a good introduction for people True. who may not be aware of what we now know about the full range of gender and sexuality. Um. When I went to find an alternative perspective, I had kind of banked on it kind of semi-resembling the one I'd had. Like, it would have been really convenient for me if I could end the video with, Hey, remember what I thought about the episode? Well, here's someone who knows way more about the issue, and they agree with me! But no, it turns out my perspective can be flawed. I think Zinnia makes an interesting point that I completely missed. Ultimately, Bill Nye's doing what Bill Nye has always done. Provide a rudimentary, baseline explanation of a topic to an audience whose science education may well have ended in high school. Like when we discussed the act of writing an episode of this show earlier, pointing this out puts a lot of this episode in perspective. Nye's show is for such a broad audience of folks who may not know anything about the topic. In a way, the only people who this episode isn't for are people who already think a lot about the topic, people who live the topic because it's a part of their daily lives, and of course, people who think that by simply thinking about this issue too much, you've taken the wrong side in a culture war, <laughs> something, something, liberal agenda, yep. blah, blah, Don't too think. pro gay. Now, at this point, Not I am contractually to obliged it. to mention that exposure to this video or directly may it. make you up to 15% more gay. So it's highly it. recommended that you wear your ideological protection goggles provided underneath your si Hang on a second. Why is this written at the end of the script? Hey yo. Hey there. Thanks for watching. I'd like to thank Horikawa Otome for dead? letting me butcher her name like that, and also for help with the research that went into that was a really good video. Both videos are going to be linked in the description of the video, or not the description, the pinned comment below um, when this goes out as its own video. But god damn, that was so good. I've been telling you guys that like OG video essay leftist YouTube goes really hard. Back during the end of the Gamergate era when these content creators were kind of like really figuring out what type of uh, rhetoric was best for reaching people. And the types of content creators that were popular back then and how stupid they were. And the fact that they even needed to be debunked. I love seeing people who weren't around for all of this originally's reaction to all of it. Because it's always like, how did this guy have fans? This guy's even dumber than the people around now. It's like, oh, I wish you were there for Gamergate, my friend. I wish you were there for Gamergate. Uh, these segments are always so nostalgic. It actually kind of feels nice. Anyway, yeah. I really don't have much else to say about it. That was so fantastic. We're definitely going to be doing more of these, um, these, like, OG video essay reaction videos, because they, that, that was a lot of fun.